course, to IESF. We have plenty more Counter-Strike action on your screen today. We are in towards the playoffs. We've got two best of threes to be bringing you, but there'll be many happening simultaneously, of course. They're all vying for a part of those seven spots at the World Esports Championships if you're in the West qualifiers and the five spots if you're in the East Europe qualifiers. My name is Naoki, okay, and of course, joined by Anders for this one. I'm looking forward to it, man. I am too. I'm glad we're in the best of threes. Not that, uh, you know, best of ones have their own kind of charm, but it's nice, uh, especially when you've got some really competent teams to get them tested on a few couple of maps. So um, I am I look forward to today. Obviously, the first game between Czech Republic and Hungary, I, I think should be uh, a higher level game as well. So yeah, best of three territory, always a little bit more fun. Yes, exactly, exactly. It should be good. We have, like I said, simultaneous games happening. We'll be doing Hungary versus Czech Republic, but alongside us is going to be uh, the Austrian side taking on the German roster, which is, of course, alternate attacks as a full five. You've got Norway taking on Portugal. Both of those sides have looked pretty good. And Kosovo are going to go, are going to take on Latvia. Latvia so far are unbeaten. They're a bit of a sleeper side. We haven't actually caught in the best of ones. Haven't caught the best trees yet. So maybe, I mean, by the, judging by the way they've been playing, apparently these victories have been quite comfortable for Latvia. So I'm sure we'll probably get a time to see them a little okay. bit later down the line. This is our game though. Let's Hungary go. versus Czech Republic. Like we said, four happening simultaneously. So we'll, we'll keep we'll keep tabs on the others because it's pretty important. And it's a pretty standard thing. We've got upper brackets. we got lower brackets. It's nice and easy. The top two sides from each of the groups, of course, three men are out from group ABC and D. The top three make it out. The top two go straight to the upper bracket. Nice and easy. The third place team go in towards that uh, lower bracket. So they have to basically make a lower bracket run from the get-go. Okay. We can work with that. We can make, we can figure it out. And we'll obviously keep you guys up to date with the results along the way. Um, you know, we can't cover every single game on the channel. So um, we'll do our best to to spread it out and get everyone in. We haven't seen uh, Hungary play yet, have we? But uh, we, we looked at some of the results. They look like they're doing pretty well at the moment. Yes, yeah, the, the Hungry side looked pretty good on paper. We got to, I guess, briefly speak to them when we were out in Yash. They made it to the True. playoffs, they made it to the quarterfinals, and then I'm pretty sure it was Sweden that they lost to, which is, you know, kind of fair enough. In, in a way, that Sweden team looked very good, of course. They have sure. already booked their spots to the World Esports Championships by winning last year in Yash, Romania. But Team Hungry looked very, very good on paper, so definitely a side to keep uh, an eye on. They were flawless throughout their group. They had the arguably the hardest group. They, they were the only group with six teams in it. The others had uh, five. So the fact that they went 5-0, and oh, didn't pick up a single loss, for the most part, they looked pretty comfortable wins as well, I think yeah. says a lot for them. I mean, this is a side now who I think we have to give a lot of respect heading in towards the playoffs. Yeah, yeah that's what it feels like. Um, they could be maybe even the favorites going into this particular match. Although, I would say this Czech Republic, we didn't get to see them play. They played with a lot of confidence. Now, whether or not that was the strength of their opponent that kind of, you know, made them think, okay, we, we've got this in the bag, we're definitely going to win it. Kind of hard to say, but I think either way, it was fun to see them, you know, kind of really show up and, and feel confident right off the bat in that game. So, hopefully, we'll yeah. see more of that out of the Czech guys. Because that was actually, that was I thought that was really cool to see them play as well as they did. Yeah, exactly. You know, against the Swiss side, the Swiss side, you know, that, that Anton who seems to be at least keeping things competitive. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Czech Republic did look very good. They've, in terms of name value as well, a very solid team. And I think this is the big thing. This is two teams with a uh, decent name value behind them. I think they've got a lot of experience too. So coming into the qualifier like this, we expect big things out of them. And the, I guess the, the beauty of this as well is that if you are to lose here, it's, it's really not the end of the world. As you saw with that schedule, Tron. loser here, then goes on to play Belgium in that lower bracket game. So it's really not the worst thing in the world. Belgium are waiting in the wings to kind of see who they're going to be playing off against. Regardless of who it is, it's going to be quite a tough game. Belgium, uh, they didn't look 100% in the quals, is how I'll put it. They're a side who have decent name value. Of course, they originally were meant to have Kios, didn't actually end up happening. We got to catch yeah. them. They pulled off that ridiculous comeback, which was insane. One, you know, 12-5 right. down, took it to OT, won it in OT. You know, an insane, insane show. Yeah. However, the fact that it even went 12-5 down, arguably in itself, is, is a little, little concerning. Yeah, that could be a sign of trouble for them. But you're right, the comeback was crazy. I forgot about that. That was a, it was a fun way to get started. Um, yeah, I um I'm I'm curious about this game. Best of three as well means we we you know we've been bouncing back a lot between ancient and Nubis as like the two maps that are gonna be that are gonna be played all the time of SL1s, it seems. So obviously there's a chance that at least the third map in this could be a little bit different and uh, maybe some of the teams are gonna be uh well prepared for that. Maybe some of them aren't, but um I I would love to see, you know, a little bit of Inferno, even maybe a little bit of Nuke, just to get some variety in there. Um but yeah, it seems like um those other two maps were heavily represented throughout the best of one stage. 
my assumption is when we get in towards the best of three strategy night, like now is that we will see a little bit more of that nuke. It's a map in which isn't uh, kind of a pocket pick when it comes towards the best of ones, just because I think it's a little bit too strategically heavy, but it's one that I expect in the best of threes. Let's look at the lineups, though. We're going to kickstart things with Hungary. Arguably the favourites coming in towards this matchup as well. We've got Coolio, Aaron, MSN, Xavi, and Corey. Now, this is a side with plenty of talent. Aaron and Corey both play under Pera currently, who were recently at Pro League. Coolio is the academy coach for Na'Vi. So he's a Na'Vi junior or Na'Vi academy uh, coach, but he's also oh, a very cool. solid player himself. Uh, Flea's been around for many years, playing on uh, sides like Budapest 5, Rubik, um, Tenerife Titans even back in the day as well. So this is a guy who's been around for, for a hot minute. And Xavi as well, similar to him. He actually played in UK CS for a little bit, Xavi, and was pretty solid. And he's currently on trial at Pera as well. So alongside Aaron and Corey. It's a very decent side. It's basically a core of Pera uh, plus Fleave, who's uh, it's the, uh, a bit of a stalwart in the scene. Been known for a while. And Coolio, same for him. So this is a cool team. Oh, and that'd be super super interesting but we do have the czech republic as well uh we got to see them in the stream earlier but uh well, yesterday that was i still just want to check over with them uh refresh everyone's memory about who uh, who they are and what they're all about here um i mean i think you mentioned last time pr was one of the people to watch out for yes. i think mbq was one of the play players that played very very well in the in the game that we saw but generally speaking they just all look very comfortable um it was it was um, a new experience for me with most of them but it was fun to see yeah, MBQ is a dedicated entry for He's one of the few kind of remaining that you actually see who his whole job is, right? I am going to crack open sites, which is for better or for worse. He's, he kind of lives and dies by the sword a little bit. Um, Detour, another great name uh, who has been super talented, just a, a very decent pack rifler. Does a great job on CT side as well. Forzy, an incredible AWPer as well. Those three all play on the Dino Eklot, uh, a very decent uh, kind of tier two side. Uh, then there's Kafida, who has been in and around the, the, the Czech side, uh, Czech kind of teams for a while playing under unity now and then pr like you mentioned this youngster who's come through the scenes and he's really been making waves plays currently on the miles and xt the academy side and we all know their history with uh, finding good kind of talent and and making sure. them tier one ready and I, I honestly think at some point pr will get that step up into at the very minimum kind of a tier 1.5 team like a kind of an og or an nip or something of the sorts something like that um yeah. in, in in due time so this is a cool game like i said it, there's basically a core on both sides it's kind of the core of Para versus the core of Dano Eklot. And then you've got a couple who come in to kind of round it all out. And in both sides, both of the the, the, the two players to round out that core are very talented. So this is a, a cool matchup where we should actually see not only the individual shine, but the strategic depth as well. Well, before we figure out who is going to win this, we do have to figure out the, the maps that we're going to be playing. We do have the veto coming up for you guys to see where we end up. And it, ooh. Vertigo is picked oh, in there. What a shock. Hey. It's Czech Republic to pick it up. Anubis and then decided on Mirage at the end of it. So, yeah, I'm surprised. Wasn't expecting to see Vertigo again for the rest of the tournament. And the fact that it's picked into, I think, is actually quite a big call as well. I mean, it is a map which, you know, when I actually look at the Dino Airclock core, they don't play it. This is meant to be their perma. So this is, uh, this is a crazy call for me to to kind of make it they are going in towards this map they're picking into it in a map in which they have zero uh wins on on hr tv they, they played it wild. once in the last i mean they're basically once this year from what i can see and it was very recently against 5w who have kind of briefly that team um i think it was the one, the one you know the one with uh with thomas i'm pretty sure yeah like thomas and red star and and joel who kind of were briefly formed and then you know it kind of fell through with the organization but um yeah, yeah they played briefly they played it that's the only time they played it and they lost so that record uh as a core and i guess you know czech republic as a as a country this is a yeah real big call I, my assumption is that this is just a map that recently they've been kind of trying to integrate into their map pool as part of the player break but yeah, wild decision, I think, is probably the, the big way that I'm leaning here. This really has the potential to go quite wrong. It is a map in which is played, at the very least, by the core of Hungary, which is Para. This is a map in which I saw them play at Pro League. They didn't look terrible on it. I've seen them even play it semi-recently as well. And a similar thing, they didn't really look that bad on it. It's, it's not their best map, but it's not their worst. Um, right. So I, I think it's quite a risky call. It's probably the, the way I'm leaning here. Yeah, I mean, in general, I feel like that some, some of these maps, like Vert Vertigo is one of them famously, that it is just either risky almost by definition, even if you kind of know what you're doing. Um, the new changes, I still, my opinion is that once you're on the A-bomb site, it, it's obviously going to make a huge difference because a massive change that's happening there. But the problem is, sometimes you don't even get there. So it's like the, the first part of the map on the ramp is kind of the same, which I'm not even criticizing that. I'm just saying that 
I, sometimes the mat rounds look exactly the same as they did on the old Vertigo. You tr the T side tries to make it up. They don't get through the smokes. They get, you know, attacked by the CT side and they just can't make it through. And then it's just the same map kind of. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of an interesting scenario. But, I mean, it's early days. I, I still want to reserve my judgment for Vertigo before I see more, you know, competitive teams played. I, I, I have to see that before I really make up my mind. But, um, yeah, fun to see it played either way. I'm, I'm kind of happy that it's in there. But it could be a disaster. We'll see. Yeah, if we're talking about cores of teams as well, if we're talking about the the Dino Eklot versus Pera, kind of which is sort of, sort of the the vibes here. Last time those two sides played was actually was only about a month ago now, obviously just before the play break. It was actually three days before the play break started. Um, okay. They played in I'm not actually sure what the tournament is, but just a bit, a bit of a random online tournament in a quarter final. Para won 2-0, and that was on Ancient and Nuke. And Nuke was dominant. So maybe an understanding of as to why Nuke wasn't selected here. It's a map in which Para have actually looked very good on, i.e. Hungary. Um Ancients was pretty close, 13-11. Uh still a win, of course, for Para. That's a map in which they like to pick into quite a bit as well. So yeah, this is pretty interesting veto. They're kind of playing i i want to say not to their own strengths and more to their, their opponent's weaknesses which is a blessing and a curse it, it's a bit of a risk is probably the way i'll go about it i think i always prefer teams who play for themselves rather than play to kind of really get a hard anti strategy a hard counter strategy they right this is a map that they're not good at maybe we're not the best at it but i feel like we've got a better chance those risks i feel like are quite inherent for me uh in, in a veto so i'm i'm gonna yeah keep an eye out is is, is the way I'll, I'll go with this i i always think that can be a big risk i'd much rather a team be like even though they're good at mirage for example i'm gonna pick mirage because we're also good and 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 we're gonna play to what a map that we know we can back ourselves on yeah you have to assume as well if you, if you sort of end up trying to play those mind games it can work but the the danger is also if you go into a map and you think hey they're gonna be they're gonna be worse than we are on this one and then they're not it's like all of the premise goes out halfway through the game and you're like yeah. oh damn like we made we did it to, we did it to ourselves you know mm. um now obviously depending on the mentality of the team some teams could live through that kind of thing and just kind of come back anyway but um you know counter-strike is a mental game too and sometimes that can be hard to overcome like you're building a potential trap for yourself as well um so yeah I, it is risky and i think at a, at a higher level the higher you go the more people try to i think just try to play to their strengths and say like let's let's play this stuff that we feel really confident in uh yeah. as opposed to trying to see if we can you know psychologize the other team and figure out what's going on <laughs> it is actually the big one yeah like i mean it, it it can obviously be successful and it's sick to see it happen every once in a while but it does feel like the success rate for those kind of picks is a little bit lower yeah no, exactly no i feel you i i feel like it is one of those things where um this is that kind of the big mental game and also kind of because both of these sides are in a way actually a mix right they're not the full fives of, of their respective teams there is going to be a little bit of a, maybe a looser style of play when you go to loose styles play do you want to go into more puggy maps maybe rather than kind of leaning heavily but i i, I quite like this feature i think it opens up in an interesting way first of all we get to see that vertigo which is just something that we've been quite interested in see how it changes at the pro at that kind of pro level uh Nubis is a map that seems to be everybody's favorite right now everybody seems to absolutely love this yeah. map and, and same with ancients but it was when they got banned in that second wave and then we got the decider of mirage if it's needed as well having mirage as a decider it's the perfect litmus test right it's just the it's the map that you don't see anything new on everybody knows and loves it, it it's as simple as that so yeah. for me when i look at it in, the, in that sense um this is a cool veto it has the kind of the blend and the best of both of so there's puggy nature which can which can bring kind of sort of just really showcase the individuals which both sides have uh, an abundance of skill within and then of course the, the tactical depth as well we have begin or not there that we will be heading underway in towards the game shortly so do not go anywhere but uh we're excited like we said there's a, a few games of counter strike happening uh simultaneously um and some of them should be pretty cool I, i'm interested in a couple of teams that we haven't actually get got to, to catch here one of which being Latvia. They went flawlessly through through their group in the same group as uh, the Czech Republic yeah. as well. And the Czech Republic looked good. So the fact that Latvia beat them and, and beat them relatively handedly as well um, seems to be positive signs for the, for the Latvian team. Maybe uh, they could be a bit of a dark horse to get um, a World Esports Championship spot. And on the other side as well, Portugal. Portugal's always in a region which uh, actually has a really decent amount of talent. And yes. I've looked at Team Portugal. They're all very good. They've all played in and around basically the top teams in the region they've all at some point played for the likes of ftw saw or something of the likes um so the kind of yeah the bigger names in the, in the portuguese region so uh cool team cool names and they for me even though we haven't caught them they 
I haven't seen them. I can't even judge what they're looking like. I would make the assumption based on just name value alone that they absolutely should be there in Riyadh for the World Esports Championships because there's some pretty big names there. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think a, a little bit overlooked. It, it, there have been some really cool, you know, all Portuguese teams in the past, but it's, it's been hard to keep them all together. But um, for sure, like they, uh, they're a country that that should be able to represent a, a field, a nice lineup. So I'm curious to see how that's going to play out as well um, for them. Latvia, I yeah, I don't know. Not maybe not the most. Like the the country that springs to mind the most for me, if I think about sort of European Counter Strike uh, okay. in terms of that, but but uh, you know, obviously produced some talent over the years, and I think it's uh, it's it's cool to see if they if maybe they're like the sleeper country that uh, that just made their way through. Um, that'd be really really cool if that's the case. Yeah, I mean, this is a, some part of it is about the future of Counter Strike, and and we do get to see a lot of new names when we're watching these ISF games that many of us don't normally get a chance to see. So you know, it's a it's a real learning experience as we go into it. Um, shout out to those of you who hang out in the chat. Um, it's been great to uh, to see you guys, uh, you know, show up every day and uh, ask questions. All the rest of it. it's good times. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for for, for for keeping us company. I guess that's the way. I take a look at this Latvian team just to mention them as well. A couple of names that might be known to to some who maybe follow the the more grassroots side of things. But uh, Rude currently plays for the Game Legion Academy team. Um, he's actually pretty good. I, I caught I casted him once, not too long ago. Look good. Look like a pretty talented guy. The other one is Keen as well. Keen also a uh, guy who's been around for a long, long time. IGL, yeah. I think he's orbs in the past as well. Played under a variety of teams like Mad Lions, Boomers 5, NASA, the Prodigies, which is when I actually, last time I got to, to catch him, I think currently was playing most recently with Gigi Howe, who recently just signed the likes of kind of Dennis Law and, and Kiebi and the rest. Either way, we are live. We are kickstarting. The best of threes here at ISF as we've got Hungary taking on Czech Republic in a banger. This is an upper bracket game, so it's not the end of the world if things are to go bad here. But you don't want to drop into that lower bracket early. That can be a, a tough run. No, definitely don't, yeah. Oh, Aaron sneaking on past. He was not four by three. Definitely saw what was coming there. Otherwise, he would have no chance to CPR. But he gets traded by 4C right away, so it's kind of... Or well, back to square one for both teams. I will say this, so for Czech Republic, getting this ramp control early on with only one casualty is pretty good. You'll definitely take that. Smoke going up and it falls back down, so it blocks the entire wall off. So really well done with the smoke. That's a nice little trick. Four versus three as they do get another kill taking down Fleave, and they're going to keep pushing forward, trying to get that bomb planted, Ooh. although they will lose MBQ. Okay. I'm done. Both sensors. This first fight could be important. Pushing the smoke by Forzy is a wild call and some very slow taps there, but he will get the kill in the end. Um, thrusting Coolio into a tough one. D2 looking for the fight. He has no information, no kit, and probably no chance in this one. Yeah, I think the lack of a defuse kit here makes all, all the little taps almost completely irrelevant. They'd have to make such a series of mistakes to make that happen. Don't know if there was a kit on the ground, but I'm not seeing one anywhere. So it'll be Czech Republic to pick up the first round. And all in pretty straightforward fashion, right? Like nothing super tricky about that round. I guess the smoke being dropped there towards the uh, the new hole in the wall is, is was pretty cool. Um, but I'm guessing most teams know how to throw that by now. Yeah, exactly. There's a... Uh... It's a little bit of an adjusted lineup, but you are right. Most teams have sort of figured it out by now. This is a good start. Czech Republic coming towards Vertigo on that T side, which honestly, the T side of Vertigo can be so difficult to get going. It can be one of those most you know, brutal. If you get smoked in a ramp, for example, you kind of lost. It. You, you really don't know where to go, especially if you don't have the uh, kind of a true way to counter it. If you lose B stairs control, same thing there, where it can be so difficult to get on towards sites themselves, where more often than not, you actually have to lose a lot of bodies to actually get towards the site. You have to really trade out hard. And I, I always think that's, for me, something that makes birds go unpopular with a lot of teams just because maybe the RNG value around it. Mac 10 <laughs> will get three, though. That's good cash in hand. And the AK should see it off, and it will with a spam through the top. Yeah, I do think you're right. And I, I think what well, one of the frustrating experiences of playing Vertigo, especially on the T side, is... It doesn't even matter if you really want to attack the A-bomb site. The problem is you have to spend so many resources mm -hmm. like fighting for the ramp. Even if your whole plan all along was never to go A, you just always wanted to go to the B-bomb site. It doesn't matter because if you don't if you don't create some amount of respect around the, the that A ramp, then it's going to be way easier for the CTs to have, you know, one B2 middle or something like that. And then it's going to be very, very tough. Although 
A little bit of a fight, speaking of the bomb site breaking out. So two for one trade at the start of it. And that probably should have been Corey dead, to be honest. I had no idea how he lived yeah. through that one, but um, you know, he's still alive back there. Oh, I oh. say that. Might have jinxed him. Sorry about that. <laughs> Corey, he will fall. Detour, though, will deliver. This is a guy I really want to prioritize highlighting. If Detour plays well, this guy could be unbelievable. A really good game when we caught him the other day. So, so far, so good. Does get traded pretty immediately, though, in a two versus two situation now. M4, one of which is spotted. This is a really uncomfortable fight, which I think, yeah, Forzy knows. There's actually no point. It, it's that sort of fight. He sees less of them than they do of him. So he just doesn't want to give him a freebie. Yeah, who can blame him? 50 seconds on the clock here. And staying kind of centered on the map are the Hungarians just for the minute. Means they're dynamic, they can rotate A or B depending on what's going on. So I don't really blame them for, for sticking like this. It's going to be Fleev to take down Forzi and MBQ. Now alone. Oh, he actually pushes in front of the Molotov. I don't think Fleev was expecting that. So good chance for a bomb plant right here. Although Cooley was walking in on a second more. And he's going to have this kill for free. Oh, it's just around the corner. Might have given up that opportunity. And now we get swung up on instead. MBQ to take him down. A quad kill for him. And Czech Republic to pick up the round. That's a massive round to be taken. I thought it was on. I thought Cooley was going to catch him before he even got that bomb down. But... It wasn't to be, and and somehow, somewhere, the T-Side stay alive there. It started pretty roughly, you know, Corey and Xavi combined, and like I said, Corey definitely should have fell initially, but the fact that he didn't still kept the numbers in their favor, and Czech Republic essentially won that round from 3-4 down in terms of the numbers. So, a man disadvantage round win is massive for the confidence. And a big, big... Uh, early showing out from this T side where for Hungary who are at least name value are so scary to us from such a such a brilliant group stage not dropping a single map you come in towards the playoffs and think is it gonna be all the same for them and so far not so good PR for the first Xavi gets caught and he will just fall away as well PR not gonna overextend in via stairs just yet or you know Nice kind of one-and-done position here. Very often, get a kill on someone just kind of walking in, looking the wrong way, but... Not going to be this time. No one's really trying to test that out. I would say for Czech Republic, picking up these early rounds, making it a, a nice 3-0, and probably a 4-0 and here. That gives a lot of space to work with. Take some of the pressure off of, of making these early rounds work, work, and I guess on the other side of the coin, it puts a lot of pressure on Hungary to suddenly be... That next rifle round that they're going to be coming into now is going to be so important. If they lose that, then this game is going to spiral really, really fast. So, yeah, I think that's kind of the, the lay of the land for the minute here. Bomb is going to make its way up, and I don't think there's anything to really stop it. So it will definitely be a bomb plant, and the only question is whether or not they can do a little bit more damage on the Hungarian side, but it's not looking likely at the moment. I think you've basically got to play exits here. I don't even see it really worthwhile to look in towards a sigh i mean they're still getting close enough where they could be tempted for a late one late kind of pop here i, I don't think it's worth it still maybe if you get a kill it'd be nice other ideas though for detour who delivers with two i shot it off <laughs> with my culio and the deagle yeah, why not i'll just save backside nice and simple forzy will make sure as well that Nobody gets close enough. The MP9 going to run in. Corey might even go down before they even fight. And he can't get a kill at the end. 4-0 start. This is, this is pretty pretty, uh, pretty mega right now. This is a really, really good showing. Yes, it is. AWP being picked up on Fleev. And wait, did they pick up two orbs? Did they sell one of them? All right, I think they might have, they might have reimbursed one of those two rifles. <laughs> Thought for a minute it was going to be the double orb, but um, no. Still, round number five is here. Just the single AWP on Flea, fair enough. A great aggressive push coming out. Savvy getting a kill there. Corey as well, so I don't know. I feel like the T's have a really good shot. Normally, you throw a flashbang over from the T side that will that will stop that push coming out from the from the CTs, but I guess it's not either not happening or they're still just wanting to fight regardless, but it feels like there's probably a grenade missing from the Czech Republic there to really yeah. make that a reasonable round. Now, the bomb has been dropped out here as well, so pretty easy for the CTs to group up on the other side and wait to see what's coming. That's true. Where 
Oh my god, they picked it up. How? They actually picked it up. Well, I'll take a single point of damage. It's a question in detail sense now of saying, do you actually want to stick around here? Just don't, mate. You know there's at least two here now. You've spotted an, a, an orb who's taking a pop shot of you, and you heard the M4 earlier. Get out of there. But in the two versus five, where actually can they go, I think, is the the main conversation they need to have, and basically nowhere. They're going to have to try and pug this out. They're going to have to try and catch hungry off guard and so far they've given them absolutely nothing the flash is great one tuck towards yellow they're both known as well now as well a, a step and a, and a pop shot from different places will mean that known quantities this one's done 35 seconds they haven't cleared sandbags just yet they are holding for it the flash is good detour down and forzy left to try and keep hold of this ak-47 and even that might be a big ask too as he's starting to be choked in towards this small position yeah, huge round this one for for the Hungarian side. It's important, obviously, to get on the board, but even more so with all the people alive right now. Not going to be losing a single player as the time expires here. That's a nice luxury on the CT side for any map, really. It means they can have a little bit more utility work within the coming rounds. And also stealing three AKs is... Loki a little bit sick as well. You do you yeah. avoid those those one dink, you know, like oh I got the I got the ninety one damage on him, but it wasn't enough for the kill, which is obviously the most frustrating experience playing with the with the M4s is it's just be falling short of getting those kills there. But um yeah, four to one. AK's on the C T side and Hungary finally showing some signs of life here. Wow. We wanna see whether they can chain them in a consecutive fashion. We always try to say this, but it's all well and good to get in these one-and-done rounds, but you've got to make these gun rounds start to find some consistent form. Hungry. That's a good one, though. Like you said, no investment needed for them with, for the most part, as uh, three AKs are a big luxury to have on that CT side, especially. If Fleet gets going with the AWP, he's a pretty talented guy as well. You know, I mentioned a Forzy on the other side who, when he has the big green out, he, he's pretty scary, but Leave us his moments too. Definitely a name we shouldn't sleep on just yet. Could be a cool battle as well. Maybe not Vertigo specifically. Vertigo isn't a great map for orping on either T or the CT side, but maybe the rest of the Vito, we can see a bit of a head to head between those two. I'd be looking forward to it. Detour trying to make his way up. Again, a lot of control here for the T side. The CT is really, really far back. It's good as long as they're getting the kills, but it does get the T's into a nice tactical position where they can start to use their utility a little bit more. Oh, Fleev, he knew that there was someone in the corner. He would love to get that shot through, but he doesn't get the timing down. So instead now, three versus three. They actually wanted to go at the bomb back because they have control of B, but that's not going to happen. That bomb gets caught, and I think with 30 seconds now, it's, it's too late. Now they're going to turn it into a flank instead, but PR gets caught. Maybe it was a little bit too obvious. Man, they had a chance here, Czech Republic, to do a lot more. I think now it's going to get rough. We have one versus one. Obviously doable here for Detour, but can he even plant the bomb? It's so risky, so out in the open. He fakes it once, and the problem is now he can't fake it again. So, yeah, going to get swung up on there. You might try and go for the fight instead, but he's going to plant the bomb. Ooh. Right, oh, no, he comes up and gets no. second shot, and Czech Republic win the round anyway in the last possible millisecond of that round. Genuinely has to be less than a second. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of see maybe on the replay, but that had to be less than a second. I was watching that clock like a hawk, and I thought he'd missed his timing. I cannot believe he gets away with this. Tap on towards the bomb. He holds it for two seconds as well. I mean, it's one has already been on the screen for a fair margin there. That is as close as it gets. Credit to Czech Republic. Hungary just gets shell-shocked that they even lose that. They thought it was a guarantee. Wow. Yeah. Well played. Well played by Detour. That is the kind of thing that's really going to make you frustrated, right? Especially, like you said, it's coming off of that... That one round you win on the Hungary Garian side, and we're saying, well, it's not enough. They need more than just a one round, and then you lose the next one in that fashion. That's devastating. Five to one, and we're into round number seven here. And it costs them so much. Now, no, neither team really has a lot of money going into this round, I guess. That's kind of the, the upside for, for the Hungarian squad is that they had so many people alive in that first round that they won. So they can still buy but uh, if they lose this one, they're back to saving. It's probably going to be like 7-1, to one, catching Corey here on the flank. 
I like the attempt. It's one of the fun parts of playing Vertigo on the CT side is that you can sometimes get down that ladder, but my god, do you get punished. Stabby trying to swing a little bit wide. We'll get the one kill, but surely there are grenades coming in his position. The Molotov lands a little bit further back. He's trying to jump up on top. It's very uncomfortable. He's done a great job in staying alive and getting that double kill. That's actually pretty sick. That's true. Or posted. Backside. Three versus three, but Jaffi's so low. Makes this round considerably more difficult. It's going to be tested. For Fleev, going one for one, arguably might not even be enough. He's a little bit isolated here. They probably get the Utah down. He needs the one and then be able to fight for the second. That's it. That's perfect. Finds that first. Doesn't go down, at least just yet. So he's buying time for the rotations to come through, even if he doesn't get another kill here. He's bought time, but he actually will. Forzy, going to find a kill, and there is no time. Flea's played that perfectly. Gets his kill, drops away, beckons over for the rotations to get some support in on that CT side, and then, in his second time of asking, finds that kill, and there's just no more time. And Forzy has no options but to fall away and keep hold of the orb. And the big thing as well for Czech Republic, losing that round, and not only losing it, but losing it without a bomb plant means no money for them to work with. So they have just an orb. And in all fairness, they might even actually force by around the orb because a couple of them are on about 1.5k, which is in and around, yeah, that double eco territory. So they are actually going to force in towards this. It's sort of the only decision they can make. They can't really eco. They don't yeah. have enough money long term. Crazy way to get this game started here. Poor Z, if you stuck around, that might have been almost a free kill there, but he unscoped just at the wrong time. But a bit... Uh... Frustrating, I think, for Czech Republic. They had that last one, five versus three, but they just couldn't make it past the defense of the B-bomb side. And I think that's because they didn't throw the grenades until they'd almost practically lost a couple of people there. Some danger here for Aaron, but he's going to be good for that one. All right. Thought maybe he could have gone down to the Tech-9 on the other side. Now, flashing his way for the Molotov. This time, he will go down. Headshot, even if he's completely blind there. MBQ is still going to be able to do that. So four versus four. Fleave being wheeled in with the AWP. Oh, that looked like it had been a sick multi-kill, but doesn't connect with any of the shots. Down to a minute on the clock, and Czech Republic haven't forced them back. So now what do they do? Do they stick around and fight here to the death, or do we just try and go somewhere else? That's the question, isn't it? Forzy, he's getting creeped on a bit here. It's going to be a flick down and a flick in which he can't convert. Takes a bit of damage, but stays alive. It's a tough shot in all fairness. Just holding right up to the top end side of the sandbags. If he just making a move, he might walk straight in towards the orb here, unless they boost on towards the box and fight together. Kind of a 3 2 1 uh, swing type of vibe. He might get a chance. Smoke will come down. Fleave gets one. And that's the bomb he just spotted, too. That's good information. Look for a second. And Fleave going to convert. No scope attempt for the third is ambitious. And I don't hate it. He may not connect. The rifles will do the job. And Forzy, once again, just has to call to save. Yeah, no other choice. I think this is starting to look like a really nice little comeback coming in here for the uh, for the side of Hungary. Slow start. Maybe not what they were hoping for, but 5-3. to three, You got a little bit more money on your side. It's kind of started to work out. And maybe some of the early power of Czech Republic here is fading yeah, I think it's a very open game all of a sudden. Um, a lot can still happen, but some of these rounds that they're winning here for the CT side, they they do have such a good economy going uh, going forward all the time, right? It's it's something that's helping out. I mean, not a ton of money, but enough to have enough grenades to kind of keep the force up. And also, Czech Republic are out of money, so there should be a chance to build even more. Very true. Can Hungary, the question for me, is can they actually steal away a lead here on this uh, CT side? Because these last few rounds have actually looked pretty good. Even the gun rounds, that kind of half by force round there as well. It seems like maybe they were slow to start in towards this game, but are now waking up a little bit. On the other side of Czech Republic, if they can guarantee a lead on the T side of Vertigo, that's a pretty big positive to have on their side. They want to pop B here. Xavi is going to be tested. He does actually take a bit of a tag. First fight goes his way. In the open, he's going to get a second full blind and thankfully has the support to Forzy. Can't do anything. And these pistols, oh my god, they're actually going to get away with a kill. It's okay. not the end of the world, though. Definitely not. Couple of casualties. 
But uh, in general, they're going to be making a little bit of money behind that round. Still the AWP in play, obviously. Four versus five here, and... Yeah, on the other side, PR kind of lacking a little bit in the game right now, right? He's one and seven. Uh, Kafita is three and eight. Detour is 13 and five, which is absolutely outrageous at this point in time. That's a lot of kills to have early on. So, But it can't just all be on Detour, right? They need a little bit more. And hopefully we'll get PR and, uh, and some of the rest thrown into the mix. We know that he's got the skill for it, so just a question of time. But Czech Republic, I mean... If you want it to have more of an impact in the first half, it has to be really, really soon, or you're going to run out of money once again. And it could be Hungary kind of ending at 7 5. Nice shot from Fleev. Just detour the top fragger out of the round. This is a, a pretty important one. I've been doing a little research on the side as well, just seeing how the other games are going. But I also came to the realization, Anders, that you win one best of three here, you're guaranteed to land because this is up bracket. So this is actually even more important than we initially That's thought. PR, gonna play up close towards Jen. Kafida finds one, so does PR, swings on that smoke, and there's a big flank coming through from mid. MBQ, that's a perfect execute. No fights lost. Detour fell early, so that one doesn't really count in this sense. They've got a 4v2 post plant, but Aaron, bit of a gimmicky angle, will catch one. Do they want to give it a go, though? I don't know. Aaron's so low. Yeah, I don't, I, they don't have the money is the other problem, right? Like, they can't really afford to throw away everything, or they, they, they kind of almost do anyway. I love NBQ hanging around, lurking in the middle without really pushing it because you could yeah. tell he just got that one kill and any chance for a retake was going to be done with. So really sick. Czech Republic now up to six rounds and it puts so much pressure on the CT side economy. They, I think at the end of the day, losing the two people in the previous round, it, it does make a difference now. It bleeds into this round in a big way. Hungary, some tough choices to be made in terms of the money coming into these next couple of rounds here. You could see... They could buy, obviously, on Coolio. They've got Aaron with the saved AK, but God, it's not looking pretty after that, is it? No, not at all. It, it really is being uh, a tough show of form here. I mean, that's a nice open, nice start, but they just don't have a strong enough behold. Xavi's had a couple of moments in that last round, got one kill and then a second blind. The, the thing that I'm starting to see now, though, is that Czech Republic, they've realized maybe A is a little bit too hard for them. It's a little different, you know, going on towards the A side. So they're just constantly testing that B to, to mid kind of split that they're going for, and it's working. And we like to always kind of say it, but if it isn't broken, why fix it? Just keep drilling this home. And you're actually also kind of testing Hungary in a sense and saying, all right, we've been going B the last few rounds via mid, but more often than not as well. When are you going to start to stack that a little bit more and actually then leave A a little bit vulnerable? It's, it's, it's these sort of mind games that we start to see come through. Two round lead. Force Black going to come through, though, from Hungary. They don't bring a, a lot to the table. Like you said, the money wasn't in a good spot at the tail end when they were in that two versus four. So interesting that they are kind of still committing to fights. And the knock-on effect is pretty big here. Double MP9, a FAMAS, an M4, and an AK. Not the worst buy, but still not the best. Yeah, leaving a lot to be desired. That double MP9 setup, I mean, under the map, there's a lot of fun ways to play with it. I, I think, maybe especially around this B-bomb site, he's kind of alone right now. Savvy, but otherwise, you know, you get those jumps up, you can get flashed in by a teammate. Ooh, maybe Corey could still throw a flash over the wall with a little bit of luck, but it doesn't even matter. He's going to get the kill on PR, who's again having a bit of a nightmare time at the start of this game. Two to nine going into this 11th round. But they're going to get their one in return. That's a fight that's always going to favor the AK, unfortunately. That range for the grating. It'll be a four versus four now. With 50 seconds on the clock and the bomb leading its way towards the A side of the map. They're on that ramp and starting to get a little bit close. It doesn't look like they're going to run into any CTs for a bit here. So they are definitely going to be within striking range of that A bomb site if they want to be. Yeah. 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 Double stack up close by a short it. I don't know, primarily hold over towards deep site itself. I mean, they can hear all of this information. It's not exactly like the Czech Republic are going quiet about this. They want to finish towards eight. That, there's a flash just missed there in all fairness on the T side. It banked off the yellow. Bit of metal. The feeder got to try and get up close. Aaron for the first. Looks for the second. And a deliver as well. It's fallen apart. Czech Republic, again, just didn't give themselves enough time to work with. And they're going to try and save an AWP. And Flea's got other ideas down goes Forzy. Thankfully, he has a bit of funds to work with in towards this next round. Uh, along the rest of the team, though, 
maybe not the case. Even getting into those AKs is a bit of a luxury here for the Czech Republic. So we could see a 6 all finish. Wow. A wild time. But yeah, that A ramp proving to be a little bit of an issue. Six to five, like you said, could be a tied up game at the end of it. Still pretty open. I mean, either way, how this plays out, I think both teams have a chance to make a comeback and a bit of victory in the second half. We'll see what happens. Molotov, not what you were expecting, I'm guessing. Probably wanted to speed up or put some pressure on with the Mac 10, but it just clipped the ceiling there. So unfortunate. I think, especially because I'm guessing the rest of the squad here were waiting for some pressure. Like, if he runs up with the Molotov and and can maybe get a kill or put some pressure on, it could draw a bunch of people to the A side, and that's when you hit the B-bomb side. So now, they probably have to come up with a slightly different plan here. Javi, a bit of more passive approach from him. He actually hears the information of a step on stairs. It just drops the, the molly early. Doesn't need to fight too aggressively here. Pop flash as well. Slowing them down. Time has been an essence of, of which Czech Republic haven't respected all too much. The, a couple of the rounds they've lost have come down to the clock itself when they go for these super late executes. And they come all five here towards theirs. Javi definitely going to be tested. Yeah, he's been playing pretty well so far. So now he's got a slightly better weapon than the previous round. Maybe it's going to make a difference for him. Kafida will take down Aaron. And ooh, they actually had the, the time to get that kill on him. That he finally goes down, but every time they shot, he's been getting about a kill around, which is pretty sick. Bomb should be planted here. Smoke is still up, so probably better for Hungary to try and go for the retake. They don't care about the extra money because of the 12th round, so not going to help our Czech Republic to get that extra bomb plant in there. Corey, thinking about moving forward. They have a couple of grenades here. They could set up for a flash. It's Coolio to get the one. Trades his way into Detour as well. It leaves Forcey on his own all the way in the back end. He's got no grenades to slow them down with. They're going to try and see if they can set up something, but a good headshot here. Defusing the bomb already. Does he realize the inside of the smoke he's looking for? He can't find it. A full-on defuse for Coolio, and that's a job well done. He'll tie up the game at 6-6. Six to six. This is a pretty good vertical that we've got so far. Both of these sides have had their little periods of where they've been in control, but neither of them kind of grasping and running with it. So a 6 all finish makes his pistol all the more important. Decent response to that tail end. It wasn't looking good at one point. I mean, we were really, I think we were 5-1 down where Czech Republic had a, a real healthy 4-run lead and they let us yeah. live. Uh, it, it took a while to get going, but Hungary have now showcased as to why they were so good in the groups, why they were unbeaten, didn't drop a map. Most of their games are pretty one-sided too. Now we've at least got the understanding as to how that happened, whereas... Czech Republic did pick up a loss. It was too Latvia. Start in towards the T-side pistol. He's good. Flee fires the first. Pistol could be real critical. Tied game. Both teams kind of starting to get activated a little bit here. Still missing. Maybe just PR as the one player. Going to get tested, but... Had a hard test to pass there. Three people on the side with Glock. She's going to go down. But the difference between him dying like that or getting just a one kill is still pretty huge for the defense. Now, five versus three, making some noise, running in the middle. MBQ maybe should have even lost that fight to Corey, but somehow he comes out on top. So maybe a chance still. They've lost the A-bomb site. There's already a T player. You can see Fleev. Yeah, he's made his way all the way up here. So they could rotate back. And as long as he stays alive and holds his corner, it's going to get real tricky. Forzi's well aware that someone could be at that corner. But is he actually going to check it? Yes, he will. And somehow Fleev doesn't see him. That's surprising. Okay. Still got a chance here. I think an isolate fight. Zavi, that's a great swing. MBQ going to get caught. Kafida in the back lines. Little Messi gets his and Forzi will also find one as well. How has Forzi got away with a second? Who knows, but who cares? Czech Republic, take the pistol. It didn't look like a good start as well with Flea finding his. This is a, a very important recovery in that pistol and a very strong start towards CT, which they needed. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, that's that's a position that I don't think Fleev is going to take up again. From the point of view of the CT, there, he, there was so much more visibility than on the other side. So that might be worth it to think about, guys, if you're holding that position ever again. Maybe, maybe don't. That seemed <laughs> like it wasn't going to be a good idea. Seven to six is the scoreline. Czech Republic back in the lead ever so slightly. And they do expect that there's not going to be any armor or anything. We can tell because they bought three MP9s, so they are ready to make a little bit of money behind that. 
if they're going to get the chance to here. Eight being held. Could do a decent chunk. They try and run away from it, but a few will take at least some sort of attack. Another one behind as well. Does a decent amount of damage that time. Flea especially takes a hell of a lot. Yeah, end of this range. Sure, there's a deagle on the other side, but even with the flash setup, it's not going to make a big difference here. Now the MP9's getting put into play. A very, very straightforward round coming out from the CT side. They don't even take, I think, a single point of damage in this one, so... They're going to make their way through. They're going to be smiling into the next one, enjoying that two-round lead. But Hungary will have their AKs finally picked up here, so... Curious to see what they're going to come up with. Very... Very sort of straightforward calling, I would say, from Czech Republic when they're on the T side, which I think is fine. Um, maybe don't overcomplicate things um, when you're playing these kinds of games. I think it's probably better to just try and... Yeah, try and make it a little bit more straightforward. Take yeah. take the A ramp, put some pressure on. If it's too much pressure, go back to B. But having having more elaborate strategies than that could easily backfire. All right. Trade. Javi and PR going one for one through the smoke there. Bit of a spam behind as well. The MP9 hoping for a bit of a tag just for information more than anything. So yeah, not to be. A two round start for Trevor Republic is good here. The first gun round is the most important. If they can convert this on the CT side, then we're talking about them being able to take this map. If they can't, if Hungry get back into it, once again puts the same sort of arguments that we saw at the tail end of the half. Pushing a smoke is a big decision though by Coolio, and one which doesn't pay off. And it could get worse. A tag comes through and a ding consoles Corey, leaving him low. Yeah, three versus three here, but with Corey being that low. How does he get into it? He almost has to rely on his teammates to get the bomb planted and just try and play at a range with the AK and hope to snipe somebody away. Detour in an interesting position. I wonder if he's going to be able to flick quick enough if they come around on the other side. Smoke goes very deep. I don't think that's meant to be happening. I think that's meant to be a little bit further on up, but, you know, luckily they realize and they actually go and check it, so... They're going to lose Corey in return, but again, he was very low on health already, so he was probably going to die no matter what here. Two versus two, they're running through the center of the map, and PR is hearing it, so he can call it out to his teammate. Kafita is well aware, and he's going to be rotating towards the steps on the other side, so let's see if they are ready for Kafita to be there. They might expect that PR is going to be coming in from this position, but the question is, are they going to be reading the Kafita on the other side? And look at how close he is. Oh, nice setup. Even as he's kind of falling down, he still gets a shot on Aaron, and that's Czech Republic picking up round number nine. Okay, this is where we, like I said, if you can find this first gun round on seat side, and especially considering it's a bonus round as well, where, you know, it was kind of primarily guns that previous weapon brought over. We're talking kind of FAMAS and MP9, which actually gave them the opening two kills. Those weapons getting away from around like that is pretty huge. Yes, we see the small positive of Hungry getting a bomb plant, which could tempt a buy. I don't, I wouldn't actually like it if they did, though. I'd rather they half buy here with maybe... Tech Nines, Mac 10s, and then full by next. But yeah, it's not bad. This is a, a good position that uh, that kind of Czech Republic can put themselves in on their own map pick, too. Looking good. And like I said, you know, the core of the Dano Echo side, it's not actually a map in which they they, they play at a at a tier two level. So interesting that they're actually looking pretty clean on it, to be fair to them. Yeah, they've made it work uh, super respectable at the moment. I appreciate that, too. Um, never know what you're going to get in some of these cases, but um, but well done. Three-round lead. A little bit of a type going on. I think there's a little bit of a tech issue to sort out before we get back with the game. Um, yeah. Shout-out to you guys in the chat. I know some of you are asking for <clears throat> results uh, for some of the other games that are going on. I think you go to isf.gg. Should be able to see what the results when they start to to, to come in. So, um, mm -hmm. so, yeah, check it out there. And we'll try and keep you up to date when we can, obviously, in between the games. But, uh, yeah, technical timeout for Hungary. Not sure what the problem is, but hopefully they can sort it out quickly. Yes, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Only a brief one, we hope, and then we can get right back underway. But this is, uh, yeah, so far, so good from what I've seen, at least uh, for the time being. I can have a little look over to ISF, IESF, there we go, <laughs> .gg and see 
if any of the maps have been included. It would be pretty early for them to be included unless they've been absolutely sped run. But for now, I think it's probably the case that there's not a huge amount of information on offer. We're one of the few live. I'm looking. Yeah, nothing really on offer just yet. But we'll keep up to date and see maybe whether something can happen. The tech pause is done, however. So we can go right back into the nice. nine to six. They have opted for a force here. It's it's one that I'm not a huge fan of in the sense that they just don't bring enough utility for me. They have to win direct aim duel, something they've already been struggling with. Yeah, not an easy task. One single flash if you get close enough. Ooh, all right, Aaron. I think with a potentially a good move there. If you get a caught one CT player, that could unravel the defense quite a bit. Still moving forward, looking to take another fight. They have a little bit of utility on Coolio as well. But other than that, they are very, very slow down here. Not quite the last chance, I think, for Hungary to make a, a return and a comeback in this game, but we're getting really dangerously close to the point where there aren't going to be many more mistakes allowed. So let's see how this plays out. They've got Fleev, I think, sneaking through the center of the map. Very powerful position if he can just distract even a little bit. Obviously, get a kill, it's going to be huge. Because there's a big stack going on to the A-bomb site for Czech Republic. So unless Fleev sure. is successful, it's going to be hard to break through. No, you're all right. It does go eerily quiet as they wait. For that first fight, Tap, not connected by Corey. And a smoke will come down just to try and slow them down. Spam again, not really effective. Now there's three plays and a fourth rotating over. For Czech Republic, one in via mid to try and hold in rotation, and they'll get it. This is important. Hungary are winning important head-to-head -head duels, but forsey has got the right ideas. Surely oh. not. How has he walked away with that round? That is brilliant individual work. Three kills to Forzi's name, and Czech Republic just cannot seem to lose a round right now. Yeah, and honestly, the sound of that round was well built by Hungary, right? They yeah. leave in the middle, did his job. He's, he caught one rotation. Did get traded, but he slowed down a lot. If the rest of them could have just taken down Forsey, it would have been fine. But I think, especially in that last 1v1 with Forsey and whoever was left, it, it looked like they had no idea they were still in the corner. They thought he'd escaped through the smoke. So they try and spam him down, and it turns out he was actually still in front of the smoke. So unfortunate, maybe a little bit of miscommunication. I think it was Aaron at the end who might not have got the call, or there might have been too much panic going on. But either way, that's a bit rough. They did not get a bomb plant either, so... 10 to 6 as we move into round number 17. They are moving up the A ramp once again. And Detour is kind of the only one there. But let's see for how long they can rotate people in. I'm enjoying what I'm saying. This has been pretty good so far. Smoke. Comes down, doesn't do a lot. The flash is not going towards Flea, but the team behind them it is running and gunning take nine. Normally only goes one way as Javi converts that kill. Not an impossible retake, but they just have no information. Are they just tempted to full save here? And they are. And primarily, probably, because they just don't want to give away guns. Yeah. Wild. I thought for sure that what would just happen is Detour would fall back when they when they sort of try to come through and he'd be able to call for some backup in there before anything happened. Speaking of losing guns, they'll give up another one here. Savvy just running away. This is, I think, really, really smart for Hungary. It's... It's about the money for them right now. Czech Republic, they have some cash in the bank still, even after losing this round. But yeah, of all the rounds that that they could have given away, Czech Republic, this is the more unlikely one. And they're actually losing so many guns now on the CT side. After making the call right away to save, they don't even get a chance to really do anything. That's brutal. It is. Three... Rounds the difference and a round on a nothing as well for Hungary like that. It's pretty important. And it's just a different tempo that, that the Hungary decide to play with that one. Super aggressive. They just want to take fights and they do. I mean, I think Czech Republic can just buy right back in. Not really too much of an issue, but they themselves then take a little bit of a hit in the sense of they don't have great long term economy anymore. They had to take a pretty hefty investment. So, yeah, big one to lose. They think somebody's back white. They would be wrong as PR's fallen away. Aaron, tap towards default, doesn't convert. Hungry trying to test B stairs, and it might work against them. As Fleev gets caught, Molotov will come down as well as PR want to play 
double stack and he has so much information. I'm sure he heard two separate people get tagged there. Gary for PR here. That little boost up there is so hard to deal with. Especially because you're probably turning around for a flashbang by the time they actually peek and they're going to go for a boost on the other Ooh. side. PR surely shot in the back. Yeah, not quite ready for that. Still, it is a four versus three. MBQ fallen back, flashed off the corner and nearly caught, but it's actually going to be Kafido who's trying to come in there and help him. He gets downed, another trade for Coolio, and we're right back into a two versus two here. Got to be careful about the bomb plant here. Aaron alone now as Coolio did get dropped before they even got a chance to plant the bomb. And Aaron was the one that had the bomb, and he was a little bit further away, so he couldn't really do it. I think they wanted to secure some control on the B-bomb sign before they really went for the bomb plant, and it cost them another player. Now it's on Aaron. He's got the experience. We know he's a really, really good player. We saw that yeah, last year in, in Yash. He was definitely mm. very strong, but um, this is a lot to deal with. Just 27 seconds. Yeah, it is. All right. Too tall and all that. Czech Republic now two rounds away from taking this. Pretty good work coming through. Just on the back of a, quite a major hiccup in that previous round in the one they lost. Responding kind is all that matters. 11 to 7. And and still, you know, plenty of breathing room too for that, for that CT side. You know, like a four rounds for, for things to go wrong before they themselves start to feel a little bit of that pressure. It's all in all. Cannot complain. Hungry, I don't really think they have many more chances after this one. If this round doesn't convert, they are in trouble. But it's a good start. The upper fleeve rattles off for the first. This is a must-win round for me. Oh, yeah. Uh, PR. He's got a couple up more. PR's actually up to 10 kills, so he's, he's made a bit of a comeback. Ooh, Aaron, he's so close. Kafita walking away with his back turned. That just seems like such a risk. Aaron, he's going to get that one. He'll follow it up. Wow, the defense falling apart a little bit here for Czech Republic. I'm surprised to see some of these moves. That was not only super quick, but actually really painful over towards Czech Republic. I think they have the force here. Yeah, they do. Forzy and MBQ were both uh, are both on double eco in terms of their, their money. They're both on 1.4k, which means they actually have to force here. They lose this round. Hungary go from 8 to 9, but they probably get the 10th as well for free. And then the next buy-in is about kind of survival, in a way, of this lead for Czech Republic. So pretty, pretty insane stuff. I, I really thought Hungary were out of this, but they won that round so comfortably that it's had a massive effect over towards the Czech Republic where they cannot have any other decision bar a force. Looks like it's going to be a pop in towards ramp in due time. I'm just going to trade off each other. Detour's got an M4 at the very least. They need to go two for one of these engagements here. A little bit of a calm before the storm. They're actually rolling in the AWP first. So, yeah, flee even I shot. And the danger is, if you swing like this, oh, that maybe shouldn't have worked, but I think the, the double push coming down the ramp of the pistols actually distracts from the rifle. I think they were expecting for somebody to swing to get the refrag, and the AK was supposed to be helping out, but that rifle was distracted, and all of a sudden, it's a two versus four. Hungary, this is one of the more winnable rounds here, but they're in a little bit of trouble. Savvy, oh. nice couple of kills coming through, even if he gets dropped very low. The bomb is planted in the back here. Now the 5-7, he knows he's low on health. Good communication, and well done by MBQ, and they'll oh. get the last kill as well. That is really sick. Triple on him. I, I, I think the call coming in to say one of those two players is within one-shot range of the 5-7, that makes a big difference. Yes, yeah, exactly. I mean, credit to Corey, that kind of 180 shot he hits towards from white is it's pretty nasty but i guess thankfully in the end it doesn't make a difference it's a big round for a four spy to convert the same way hungry did as well kind of Czech republic sort of step up to the plate and say well you guys did it we're gonna do exactly the same and then i'll find themselves on towards a map point on their map pick which is pretty huge against a side who have so far this qualifier yet to drop a map they went flawless in the best of one side of the groups. Maybe the first side to really draw some blood out from Hungary. No easy feat. That first fight is good for PR. MP9 will deliver. So will the M4. This could start to spell the beginning of the end of this map, I think, Anders. Oh, yes. You're not wrong. It's getting a little bit rough at the moment. Just two people left on the side of Hungary. Corey, I do like the sneak over the Smokies up against the 
MP9 on the other side, but they've just dodged each other. And the AK should come out on top, but now there's a grenade landing as well, and the AWP will equalize the whole thing. Fleave on its own in one versus four back here. It looks impossible. It feels impossible, but he's trying to crouch around the edge. Misses a shot, and now they are going to be on top of him. No more misses allowed for it. Czech Republic to pick up the opening map here. Yeah, really, really well played. Uh, you know, for, for, for Czech Republic, that's a way to come in towards uh, kind of a map and start. And, and the big thing as well, we like we said, this is a side who are yet to drop, uh, you know, a map or I guess a game in a sense, all throughout this qualifier thus far. They looked so, so clean. And now they're the first side to take a map, which is pretty sick. It kickstarts this very importantly for them. There has been some results, of course, trickled in across the board. So I guess I can read them out. We saw Germany, they've taken down Austria, 13 to 8 in that one. That's a pretty good victory. That German okay. side looked very, very solid. Uh, Portugal and Norway is currently going, but Portugal are 10 5 up in map number one. And probably arguably the big upset is Latvia lost map number one to Kosovo 13 to 5. Mm. The side who went flawless all throughout their group met against Kosovo and uh, yeah, 13 to 5 down. They lost map number one, so they're just about to kickstart map two. So that Sweet. means now for the likes of Kosovo, for the likes of Germany, and I think the likes of Czech Republic, they are one map away each from booking their spots towards the World Esports Championship because you, you only need to win one best of three in this upper okay. bracket. That's a, that's exciting. Kosovo have looked really good, I guess, too. So so that is, that's kind of cool. All right, we'll get some, some nice uh, updates. We do have a break for you guys before we get back into map number two, so don't go anywhere. And we are back once again. We have a second map coming up here. We've got Czech Republic versus Hungary. Here at the IESF, we're looking for qualification for the 
WEC at the end of the year. It's going to be exciting, and it already has been. Uh, Czech Republic kind of, uh, uh, you know, beating Hungary. We thought they were going to be maybe a little bit stronger, but the Czech guys, they, they keep showing up. They keep delivering really good performances. It's been great fun so far. Yeah, it's, honestly, it's been a really, really cool game. I mean, especially considering that it's now one of those situations where we have to look in the, the biggest in the state. Czech Republic, they are one map away now from going towards Riyadh for the World Esports Championships. That is sick. They are so close. They've just got to see this map over the line. However, this is Hungary's pick. They are going on towards Anubis. So I have to ask, and, and you know, for Hungary, maybe that's just a bad map for them. One of which they don't know all too well. One of which they, they, they really haven't done too much work on. So it, it was just a bit of a weakness. Maybe they're going to come back into strength here. They went flawless in their group. And this is a map in which they did play in the groups as well. So I'm expecting big True. things and probably a third map needed. Yeah, we're going to find out right now. It's PR, who must, I must say, had a bit of great recovery individually. He was very, very slow to start with on that first map. Corey's defending himself. Oh, a pistol oh, no. to hunt him down, but the backup is there. What a ridiculous way to get started. And now the retake is on. In fact, the retake's already done. What could he do at this range? Nothing whatsoever. What a turnaround from what looked like an absolutely flawless start to the round. They should have probably won that one. And then in a second, it's gone. I cannot believe Corey gets away in that yeah. fight. I mean, he does go down, but I can't believe he stays alive. He gets two massive kills because they, they kind of gifted to him, in all fairness. They they won by one peak, which is the big thing. But getting away and then getting hunted, actually from both sides as well. Really good retake from Hungary. The positive is, of course, the bomb plant for Czech Republic, but the negative is the fact that they only get two kills in a round, which looked initially like it was going to be something good. They just couldn't hit the shots. Simply as I think they need to be a little bit more aggressive. They need to actually hard swing him together rather than kind of jiggle peeking, given opportunities to fight. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, 1 0 start. Uh, hungry. We said we need to, they need to come in towards an uber strong, and that's a very quick round to do so. No question about it. That's pretty ridiculous. All right. Should give them uh, a chance to to get a bit of a start here. As long as they can survive the Galils that are being picked up, obviously, with the bomb planted. You knew Czech Republic were going to invest into this round. Nice little peek from Corey. Don't need more than that. Just a look, just to see. Take some of the far power away from them there. Forcey goes down, and Aaron ready to run. Or so I noticed people were saying in the chat, AA Ron, for anyone who gets the reference. Big throw, right? One of the best uh, sketches of all time. Yeah, it's good times. <laughs> so stupid. I love it. Um, but yeah, this round looks like it's over and done with. I think I've watched probably every Key and Peele ske sketch ever. They're... Um... They're pretty good. If you if you want another weird sketch show, just just while this round's kind of done and dusted like that, I can throw out one on Netflix, which is pretty pretty funny. It's it's a little bit more American humor, but it's good. But it's got like, I think you should leave. Um, okay, I haven't seen that. I think it's uh, some of them. Some of them are terrible, but like that's kind of like the the good thing. The and then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then some of them are just unbelievably funny and very quotable. Um, I, I very much right. If you like Key and Peele, you probably like it's one guy who does it. He's like the main guy in all of them. Um, very, very good. They're worth 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 watching. Um, nice. Yeah. Either all way, right. two 0 start. The force buy doesn't go su successful for Czech Republic, so they're left on a kind of a low to no buy here. A bomb plan would be nice. Anything else, I think, is a big ask. Break it open the smoke and they'll find the kill. Yeah, I think you know. A kill or a bomb plant here would be really huge for them. Kind of doubt it's going to be happening. Although Detour, actually, he will land another Deagle shot there. It's interesting. It's PR to take one more. You know, he's got a minute and 20 seconds left. He might not have much more than that, and it will be savvy to take him down. But I don't know. That's a very, very expensive round for Hungary. Needlessly so. I think some of those kills could have been avoided. But um, still, it's a decent start, right? Remember, as well, they're on the CT side. So getting these rounds early on. Uh, pretty sizable difference it's going to make down the road here. Some teams struggle to even get these three rounds to begin with, so it's not, it's not too bad at the end of the day. Yeah, that's true. Consolation kills, you take all the same. It, it, it does force the, you know, a pretty hefty reinvestment back in. But that reinvestment does also include the AWP out for Fleet. He was good in towards map number one. Had his moments. Forzy as well. Same for him. Both on the orbs. The boost's going to come through. They opt against it. They were tempted by it. They kind of jumped up and then just decided, no, actually, let's not. There's no smoke down towards mid. So we're actually kind of openly fighting here rather than fighting above a smoke. I don't think it's worth it. 
Now they might be tempted to, in all fairness. They've gone for a deeper smoke, and it forces Fleave into a little bit more of an awkward position. And the smoke and molly combo actually just forces Fleave away. There's nothing he can do. He has to kind of reluctantly give up this position and then play a little bit further back. But at least he has support. Some random taps coming out, Aaron. <laughs> All right, he's walked into it. It's almost like he signaled that he was going to do it by shooting at the wall first. And he's like, ah, still, I'm still, I'll still swing for it and see what happens. And it does work out somehow. So four versus five here. Hungry. If they win this round, it is such a good start to this CT side. They're going to lose Aaron eventually. He was trying to rotate around. So he gets himself killed. Four versus four. And. Gravitating, I think. Actually, not quite sure. They've got the middle. Usually, that means you're going for the A bomb site, but maybe they're just waiting for Kafita. But they, they got to be careful now. It's only 24 seconds left here, and he's going to go down. So, where do you go with the bomb? The bomb is in the middle the whole time. They were waiting, I think, for Kafita to find a kill to maybe force a rotation, but this is super sketchy right now. 12 seconds on the clock, trying to jump in there, but the bomb interrupted. What a spray. <laughs> I mean, he should have had that kill. Now they're getting a chance for bomb plant again. Oh no, this round could have already Ooh. been won for Hungary, but now MBQ fighting his way back into it, and Coolio, oh, he's not going to be able to save the day. A quad kill instead for MBQ, and a disastrous round for Hungary. That, that should have been their round every single time. Yeah, not a bad one to take if you are the Czech Republic to, to kind of start off your T side because it was a big buy-in both ways. We kind of see those rounds as more often than not kind of swing rounds where it should dictate a little bit of the tempo and the momentum for at least the next few. That's a big one to take, but like you said, it's a bad one to lose over towards Hungary. They are actually, though, going to opt to force again. I don't even think for the most part, the majority of them were in double eco territory. I thought they were just above it in around kind of 1.6, 1.7, which does allow you to save them by next. But they're saying, no, we're not going to... Oh my God, they don't even realize that they're touching each other in the smoke. I think they finally figure it out and both sides quickly dip away. Yeah, it's not even... It's, 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 it was the spray at the end that made that round so horrible because if he has that kill on the bomb planter, it's, it's done with. I don't think they can win the round. So yeah, that was a, was a brutal way to lose it. Uh, this one starts out in a funky way. We'll see if they can do some damage here, Czech Republic. They kind of need to go on a long run here because I think the three rounds already for Hungary is, is a, such a good sign headed in the right direction. So there's got to be a bomb plant here, and I doubt they're going to do much more. Save the M4, look for some extra kills, and that's probably it. Yeah, I think you're right. It's not one of those things where I'm going to read too heavily into it. PR, a nice shot from him. Javi will fall. Corey will trade. I don't think retake is really on the cards. I think it's going to for a little bit more of, I'll just say, a little bit more of an exit for actual strategy. But they stepped up the, the pace a little bit there as they wanted to kind of make a move in towards carpets. Opt against it. Detour. Now he'll realize they've fallen away. You would have heard those steps as well as they ran. And that's that. A second on the board with only the one casualty. Not bad. And PR coming out the gates quick as well for him. Four kills, which is really what we want to see. You know, BI is somebody who should be quite important over towards the Czech Republic side. Like you said, he was quiet to start, but in all fairness, they didn't require him all too much. And when he came on towards that CT side, when he was anchoring over towards the B site on Vertigo, he looked pretty solid. Three to two. Yes. AK and M4 is what they've got to work with. Around that, not the best, and they are going to low buy around that so they can buy fully in the next. Round number six, and going to be a bit of a tough round here. Even that Mac 10, there's only a helmet on one player who's not one of the ones with a rifle. So that's maybe not a big mistake, but it just means that some of those rifles could get disappeared very quickly by a fast moving Mac 10. PR deep in the middle here. This is so much map control to take without bumping into anybody. All they have to do for the rest of them, like the rest of the Czech Republic team, just call a freeze. Don't do, don't even move a muscle. Just wait for PR to make the move across the map because he's going to win the round just as long as you don't go down. That's the only thing that can maybe blow this one up. So MBQ does get traded. And again, I've got to say, just try not to get in any fights because PR is winning the round step by step. He's a little bit closer looking for a multi-kill. Probably will get it. Realize that's just one of the pistols. Oh, he does mess up the first fight. He'll still get one in return. And even then, the position was so strong 
And his aim is good for the follow-up. So he's going to get the triple kill. Yeah, good job, Czech Republic. A little bit of a... I don't want to say a mistake, but there could have been something gone horribly wrong if Forsy had died as well with Yop out there. But they, they coordinated well. Good understanding. Yeah, true. Julio can have a look in. I mean, why not? You can have a buy next round anyway. There's a gun there. <laughs> as he picks it up, knife out. He gets 50 cows to the chest. Forsy sees him off very quickly. The first six rounds concluded. I mean, we've barely yeah. been live for more than like a few minutes. And it's uh, a three-all scoreline. It's good to see they're still competitive as well. I mean, like we said, Cherry Republic, they are one map away from booking their spot towards the World Esports Championship, which is pretty sick considering they finished second in their group. It's a harder run because of seeding and, and kind of all the rest. This is good. This is really good. They look like a very competitive side of Hungary who at least felt pretty scary off the back of the group. We didn't actually get to catch them. They felt scary, though, and I mean, so far, we, we haven't yet seen it. No, not exactly. I mean, in spite of the good start here, they've fallen not necessarily behind, but they've allowed the game to be tied up a little bit. Back with some rifles. Corey had himself such a blazing start to this game, or at least his map 10 to 4. Wide swing for Aaron. Got to be careful you're not running back into the Molotov, and they know that he can't really escape, so a grenade around the corner, and Detoll will take him down. Great understanding for Detoll. That's That shows like a high level of reading the game there, just realizing he was not going to be able to make his way out. Under a minute. In this four versus four. What's the play? I don't really think there's a hell of a lot on offer in terms of this initial fight. They've actually got to trade this. Trades do generally benefit the T side. The big thing, just make sure you don't get caught off guard. And Javi's getting in the back line. His decision is going towards the wrong side, however. Kafida's just a bit of a bait here. They're going contact towards A. No one's home. And even though now one's rotating over, it's going to be too little too late. Yeah, starting to come a bit of a worry. Although, taking down Kafida, I guess we'll give them a chance for a bit of a retake here. Bomb is planted right next to the cake. They do have, well, they had one Molotov. They started out a bit early. Didn't want to, you know, wait around and try and throw it late in the round. And they... The only thing I guess I can say here is that they're not in great position for the afterplant. They're actually stuck on the bomb side. You can tell how uncomfortable that is right about now. SambiQ alone as they're all retaking from the other side. And yeah, again, you can't really play this one. He has to just run away. I I think even in the four and three, Czech Republic had a good chance of winning this round, but they needed to get off the bomb site somehow, and they couldn't really decide on a way to do that. Yeah, yeah you're right. They, they went for a big gamble early. It's it's a big decision in that four versus four to try and play over towards eight. I think because there was a little bit of information, they'd you know, heard a bit of a fight. There was a bit of contact being played out through water. They were in their minds thinking, right, surely it's going to be an A finish here with a slower take through main. They were wrong, and in doing so, it made that retake so difficult. Or made that instance in terms of the post plant difficult. And they, they make it work. And, and all the positive signs in that CT side, if they could pull off rounds like that to then take this map to Czech Republic, they had a free site, they walk into it, they get a bomb down, but they just don't set themselves up well enough in that post plant to kind of guarantee it from a round that probably should have been in terms of how it was initially looking. Javi drops a nade, tip away, PR, him in towards doors. This fight could be huge and he'll find it. It's a great find too on towards Aaron. And he basically doesn't really take any, any sort of serious damage either. Yeah, important opening kill, no question. But four rounds for Hungary. In some sense, even if they lose all the rest here and it becomes an 8-4 scoreline for Czech Republic, I would still say Hungary have a good chance of, of making a recovery in the second half. So yeah, I, f I feel like it's on Czech Republic right now to kind of just win on out here, just try to, to really crush them because it is a bit, a bit funky at the moment for them. Three man set up at the A-bomb site. Surely you don't keep that. Surely at some point you want to push on out. There's nobody in the middle either for, for Hungary. They've just left Fleeve on his own. And you know what? It doesn't start half bad. He's going to get that kill, but can he spin around and get more towards Dark? Surely they'll grenade him out at the very least here. Backup is coming in for, behind him now. So they are pushing out of A finally. They kind of realize they can't leave him alone forever. He'll get that kill on Detroit as well. They've made the jump across, but... Fleev have actually brought Hungary back into this game. Yeah, he might have. 
Now they've got the numbers. He's stuck on site too. Forzy, right at the I think he's turned over over towards that left hand side. That will probably cost him his life. Smoke comes towards main too. He does get caught. This round feels like it's falling apart. Oh no. They know where the last guy is. And he's on the other side of the smoke. I think Coolio's got to call it. And he will. Oh. I can't believe they walked away with that. That is so fortunate. The double spray down though is so much as a third to come off the back of it. Brilliant. Yeah, that was I, I, that was definitely could have been a round that could have gone the way of the CTs there. Nice job from, from Flea with the AWP, but somehow it wasn't enough. So the game is tied up now four to four. Still, it's kind of an expensive round, uh, even for Czech Republic here. So I don't know, I guess just more of the same for, for the Czech side. Don't slow this down. The money, mm. man, they're going to force up in this round. Okay, I, I don't necessarily hate it, but again, I would say for Hungary, maybe you don't have to try to play to win a round like this one. Maybe you could have you know, gone for like a little bit of a half kind of situation and then get one more round that's really solid in there before the half is over. But we'll see if this is going to work out. Okay. It's aggro from Corey here. I think one thing you were kind of touching on that I sort of follow up with is, is about what we expect out of Czech Republic on this T side. And because it's the T side of Anubis, I think if they get any less than seven, for example, I think they're in a bit of trouble. Where just as a, this is a map which is generally seen as T sided. Seven or more, I think they're fine. And I think they can, you know, work on that. And it will be, obviously, look, the, the less rounds you get, obviously, the, the harder it's going to be. Eight, a, a great first half on that T side. Anything less than, than seven it, it is a struggle. Even if it goes six, six, which is even, even if you win a pistol, for example, this just map leans in its tendency so much of it towards that T side compared to others that you do get a little concerned. So far, because it's been competitive, because it's been back and forth, it, it's still not the worst thing in the world for Hungary. These rounds may not have felt great for Hungary, but we'll see. We're losing a player early on here, and again, trying to gather a little bit of information. Shall be going down. So three versus four. 30 seconds on the clock. They've got the setup at the A bomb site. It's or the B bomb site. It's not impossible that they can win this. Realize here one of them is. Smoke goes up. They have an inkling that someone could be back there. I don't know if they can see the gun barrel, but they do have a Molotov. Maybe they could throw it in the back. Detail goes down. Only 12 seconds now. And they need the bomb plant. Is anyone going to interrupt it? It doesn't look like it quite yet. So, yeah, bomb will be planted. A missed shot, which is devastating. Force, you need to hit one of those here. Coolio and Corey left, and now I think it might still work out, even in spite of the missed AWP shot there. Coolio running out of bullets. Oh, no. And he's going to end up going down. So, another round for the Czech Republic. And, at the very least, I can feel a bit more positive about it. Where I look at now, though, Czech Republic, they thankfully shouldn't have too much competition towards this one. That's a sick. They're getting there towards what is a, a solid T side. Make sure they don't get too overconfident or comfortable. These rounds can very easily flip. The momentum can very easily flip too. Hungry no buy here means it should be a sick. That at the very least is a small little silver liner that we're going to take here. It's a bit of a two for one special. As long as you don't overfight. There's a gamble stack towards A with just one playing up via mid. As Aaron wants to try and keep them in this sort of area. The Molotov might force him into an engagement. And he does take a tag. Then he comes back, but he avoids the bulk of the damage. Pushes on. The USP is running wild. Detour. <laughs> he wanted to hide in the corner to get the multi. <laughs> or at least dodge the flashbang. But somehow it's backfired on them. Oh, no disastrous situation although all the cts are in this weird corner so they might still be potentially a little bit of trouble swing comes through a lot of damage and a team kill on top kafita oh he's almost saved the round but not quite it's Corey instead and it's hungry winning around that they had no business getting into kind of ridiculous hungry like you said there's just no chance that they should be taking those sort of rounds but the fact that they do is where we get a little worried. The team kill, yeah, it is what it is. And I like the, the use of kind of the USPS kind of going in towards that fight. It's a bit of a human flashbang. It's the right way to play it. Make sure the rifle gets the preferential fights. Make sure kind of the aim's not 
completely locked on. Transfers aren't exactly the easiest thing in CS2, especially in comparison to Go. Yeah, back in towards mid. He's taking a lot of damage to the mollies. He had nowhere to go there. It was either through the flames or fall back, which probably even still would have cost him his life. So he'll die early for nothing, really. I think, again, five rounds already. It's, it's such a good first half for NF Hungary. Looking at the scoreline, might not be obvious to tell, but we've seen so many of these games already on Ancient where the CT side is just struggling so much. So I'll count it as a win right now for the Hungarian side. Flea moving forward. Nice reaction time on that kill. MBQ going to be going down, but Forces getting one in return, but immediately traded. All right, Fleev, very mobile to get into the position. Detour might be able to win this fight, and he will be. Just spots out a knee or a shoulder, and he'll be able to pick it up. So just like that, from a two versus four into a two on two. Uh, they, had that, they had that lead for like a second, and then it was gone. <laughs> yeah. Two versus two. And with that 40 seconds on the clock, this fight's important. And Coolio will convert. As Detour drops. Kafid has got a lot to do. The one big positive he has, or I guess two in particular, is A, a bomb on his back. B, full belt of util. It's a 1-1 one -one split. Hungry are playing here. Smoke will come down for the cross. So he'll get a plant out. That's for sure. It's about where he wants to play the post plant. It's the main thing. Oh, my God. He thankfully hits the bunny hop. The dark player won't be there in time. Molotov comes down. Kafida hasn't considered the fact of a water player just yet. He might be caught in the side, but he just slips in towards Hieroglyph. So he, he's got a bit of space to work with. He does. Got a kit on Coolio. Smoke goes up. That puts a lot of pressure on. Grenade into the corner. They still don't know for sure that he's in the smoke, but they should be starting to figure that out. Coolio going to go on the... Oh, no. He's walked out right with the perfect timing. Swings Ooh. wide, but he can't find it. Everything is working against Czech Republic in this game. They're so close to winning some of these rounds, but it's hungry to walk away with it. And this is boding really well for a third map. It is. This is... Already, in my opinion, a, a more than appropriate CT side, a more than solid one, where they can utilize this, even if they get a pistol or not. I think Hungary can, can showcase their T side, generally speaking. If we look at kind of how this map is traditionally played out, which is T side's been very, very strong. It's not been strong enough, I think, so far from the Czech Republic. And they'll yeah. know it more than most. Triple Mac 10. AK and a glil at the end. They're going to go quick into the final round, which should come up to bite them. That's a lot of damage. And what a spray down from Xavi for all three in a matter of moments. He couldn't even get more in all fairness, but he's flashed off the angle. I still think this round is probably done before it begins, but maybe I speak too soon. 4C. I mean, see if he could do anything here. Already a mountain of work ahead of him. And Corey... At that range, the M4 is going to do all the work for him. So, 7 to 5, Hungary. This is, I, I don't want to call it over yet, but my God, it's impressive for a first half on the CT side of Anubis. We'll see if the second half is going to be any different. I think the Czech Republic guys are going to have to really step it up. I will say this, though, MBQ is still playing well, but PR is having himself a much better game from the start of it now. So, that's surely going to help out a little bit. But still, um, they are pretty far behind at the moment. Yes. Yeah, you're all right. This round would be huge to at least keep that door open. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned. I just don't think it's strong enough. What we've seen just generally for teams of these levels and, and where they've kind of showcased themselves like this tournament so far, going two rounds down off the back of a T-side of Anubis, it's a tough thing to try and kind of pull back in your favor. The map's not super T-side, but it's just more T-side than every other one we've got. And the CT side, in that sense, gives them lots to work with. Detour. Big flank here. It might not be needed as PR catches one on the cross. Bomb will go down. Oh, he misses a shot. No way. Now into the four versus four. Back and forth as well, but that's a bad one to lose. And it might actually cost them. And I think it might just... Yeah, nicely done from Aaron. Sneaking up close. Almost put the Glock right in his head and... PR is very, very low on health for this one. He's already, they're already kind of circling away from the bomb site, looking for exits maybe, but it will be hungry to pick up the pistol round. I think it's the writings on the wall right now for Czech Republic. Whether they can read the hieroglyphs or not, it's, it's there. 
And the bomb is going to go up here, so... Sneaking away, PR gets tagged again, and he's going to be dead. And Aaron, relentlessly hunting him, going to get the shot. So not even, not even a little bit is what they're allowed to get away with here. Mm. The round, uh, the lead continues here, eight to five, and it's just going to get worse from here on out. Yeah, I, um, I gotta agree. That's a decent lead built up. I, I honestly thought that this was. Probably done off the back of the flank itself. If Dito finds even just one, I really think he, he makes this kind of game stick for them. But oh, this round, may I say, and kick starts in towards that second. But yes, not to beat. Eight to five. I don't know what there is really left in the tank. Lower buy coming through from Czech Republic. So they're going to buy in towards the next, which probably means Hungary even go up towards nine. Nine five. That's tough. That's a great nade. AK. Tapping away behind the smoke. He can't transfer for the third. The nay does do it, though. Yeah, so... One kill happening, really, of Czech Republic. The rest of it going to be even more an easy cleanup. Four-round lead. This is, uh... This is going to be quite a... Quite a tough deal to come back from. In terms of the money, I mean, for Czech Republic, I guess they'll have probably two chances here with, with, with full rifles, right? The next one that's coming up, they're going to get a chance to buy a little bit. All right. Corey probably could have won that, but regardless. Um, and then after that, I think maybe one more full buy. And then it's if they can't make any of those work, it's going to be done with quickly. But such an impressive lead. Corey, speaking of which, um, he's got 18 and 8. So it's been a very, very strong game for him personally. Yes, uh, all right. He's, he's looking pretty good. He's really hasn't had too much of a difficulty finding frags, and a couple of which shouldn't have gone his way. You know, we took talking him staying alive in that very first round of this game. It looked like the gods on the side. I think that might be the case, in all fairness. He's he's really having a great time in the server. Yeah. Just died there, but it's not the end of the world, is it? 9-5. No. Buy back in for Czech Republic. Lose this one. All chances go out of the window. Yeah. It's not now or never, but it, it sort of feels like we're pretty much there just because we know how quickly this kind of t sac can spiral positively. Yeah, I mean, there, there's so much advantage right now to play that t side. I think you know what you're doing, which, to be honest, hard to argue that the Hungarians don't at the moment. It's all been lined up very nicely for them on the CT side. I'd be surprised if they're going to be worse on the T side of this map. I'm willing to be persuaded otherwise if uh, if I see the wrong signs here coming out. But so far, a bit of a default setup. They're putting a little bit of pressure on towards middle with grenades for the minute. Um, going to set up a bit of a smoke towards that dark room connection. So, yeah, just some standard T stuff here to try and get rid of a couple of people if they can. Aaron goes down, so that is a sign of life here for Czech Republic. More of that. This is, I mean, again, like I said, probably not the last Byron they're going to have, but it's getting real close to it. So they want a chance, win this one, get into the game really early on. It's not done yet, but my God, it's going to be difficult. Kafida, nicely done. They nearly gets the double there. PR, it will be taking out Corey, and he's ready to catch Fleeve as he comes, trying to escape through the middle, and I think that's the round done with here. One versus four. He talk, drops Xavi, nice and easy, and no that'll be that. I've, I've been looking as well across the board. Kosovo were well and away from looking like they were going to close it to uh, two nil in their series. They were like twelve six up or something along those lines, and they've choked a bit. It's gone to overtime, so Navia still not done in that one. There's some some cool results happening simultaneously. Of course, you can check all of those out. ISF.gg for those. Germany similar situation with them. They are. One round away from taking 2-0 over Austria, guaranteeing their spot. Portugal are pretty close as well. 8-4 up at the half for them too. The results Dang. are rolling in. So far, it's very much looking like we're going to have Germany, who are pretty close, Portugal, who are pretty close, and Kosovo, who are pretty close as well, locked into place. And of course, all those losing teams then drop into the lower bracket, and it becomes um, yeah, pretty interesting. So this one... We've still got plenty more of a story to be told here. The other series uh, seem pretty quick. This one, I think it's probably about the only one that actually goes three maps, which is what we want. We want a competition. Only got two best of threes today, so we may as well make the most of it. 
plus our next game after this will be the loser of this taking on Belgium in that lower bracket too. Yeah, of course we want the more competitive game, no question about it. Let's make it a lot more interesting. Oh, the wall bang is <laughs> so close. He had the right idea, but they'll lose one to the Tech Nine early on here. Some trouble brewing. Czech Republic once again. Four versus five to start this one with. I like the aggression coming up from the CT side, but man, it could have easily, easily backfired even more there as they're sneaking into the middle. Forward position for Kafida. It's going to be trades in there for MBQ. He does get one, but is dropped almost immediately. 55 seconds of the clock here in Kafida. Again, nice attempt. I, I appreciate that. Try to push out. He wants to help out his teammates, but the trades just are so good for Hungary at the moment. Even the Oh, I say that, but Detour is the real difference maker here. One versus one. Coolio, he's got him locked in the corner, and he'll find the kill as well. Detour needed that third headshot, and he couldn't quite find it. So it's Hungary to win the round and put so much pressure on Czech Republic once again. Despite this game still having kind of some legs behind it, it, it still does feel like we're on track with this not going in the favor of Czech Republic. It's just such a mountain they have to climb. It, while it only feels like four rounds, which many people can just be like, yeah, whatever. It's just because of the map specifically. Hungary are looking good on the T side. The economy is continuously in flux over towards Czech Republic, and they're just not building up any sort of stability right now. Only the one consolation round that they've had so far in the CT side, it's not good enough. And a buyout here, which uh, kind of matches that sort of tone too. And B9, Famas, and just don't get a pistol over towards PR to make matters even worse. Molly does airburst there for Aaron, so he won't get information or guaranteed information over towards Doors. Oh, he sets up one of his own as well. The Molotov, it might have actually extinguished itself on the smoke. Does he realize that PR's inside of it? He might not, and PR's going to get the kill. That's important. Good kills coming through. Coolio making quick work of a couple of players as the bomb is going to get planted for C and MBQ. I don't know. There's no there's no real good ending to this. You save, you give them 11 rounds, your money is going to get really broken up. You'll have the M4 and the FAMAS in the next round, but really not much more than that. I guess if you go for it, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a nightmare scenario too. Retaking it two versus four, probably not going to happen. So yeah, Hungary going to be up at 11 rounds, but realistically, Czech Republic... They're going to have their backs to the wall for the rest of this game. And there's no reason to think Hungary are going to stop doing what they're doing. They look confident. They look really well drilled on the map. It's all just positive signs. You're right. This is so close to seeing this off into us Mirage. We kind of said as well we wanted to see that Mirage too because it's the perfect test of, of how actually both these sides are. It's kind of that blend of the pugginess and the strategic depth, which... I guess we've seen bits of both of Vertigo maybe a little bit more strategical, Anubis a little bit more puggy in terms of his nature, and both sides have had their strengths, had their weaknesses, but Czech Republic do look a little weak right now. It's a big decision there. I think for them, uh, that being Czech Republic, their idea is, right, let's try and do it again back into maybe a little bit of a better buy. We can kind of work around what was saved, especially that M4, where... If we'd given it a go, and because we were half HP, it probably wasn't ever really going to be on the cards. It's kind of a, a percentage game type thing. Famas will get yeah. one. Quick trade, though. Kafida wants an upgrade, and he'll get it, in all fairness. Well, that's something at least. Kafida here. Didn't manage to escape in time, so we'll get taken down by that forward A position. Bomb well, picked up near T spawn, and what can you do? I almost would say in a round like this one, three versus four, it's probably better for the Czech Republic guys to group up somewhere, like all stack A, all stack B, group up and go somewhere, even if you want to move forward. But this idea of spreading out and kind of waiting around feels very, very hard to win a round like this one. Alone on ASPR with a Deagle. If they sneak in through the middle, which it looks like they're going to be able to do, how is he going to be able to def defend that bomb site on his own? Probably not going to happen. It probably will be a 12th round here for Hungary. They're just, they're set up very nicely. This is an impressive game for them. It is. And um, yeah, that third map is looming. It's been, yeah, it's been very, very solid. The, there really doesn't seem to be any sort of weaknesses over towards the side. PR, pop shot with an eagle, second time of asking, catches a bullet to the head. This is it, 12. And yes, there's a buy to come through for Czech Republic, but... 
the response that they need, the, the resurgence they need, I don't think it's going to happen. Yes, we may have said this in the Belgium game and they pulled it off, but that was a real sort of one in a thousand type uh, game that we had there. Hungary yeah. looked so clean on this T side. It's why we were worried and saying, if you probably don't get at least seven rounds on their T side and at least being kind of the key word there, if not maybe more, I don't know if they have enough in the locker. And, and this has been the case. Last man of Forzi will keep out of the M4, but that's all they've really got to work with. Saved over from this one. They will buy around it. I don't think enough for the orb. I mean, no fairness, he's at 2.7k, so he might actually be able to, yeah, he should actually be able to squeeze it out. Okay. So he can drop over that M4. He picks up an AWP as a, an okay amount of Uto, in all fairness, as well, because he already has the half armor. So that's fine. They're going to double orb, which is pretty wild. That's all of their funds being thrown there. MVP <laughs> as well, he. Might actually, yeah. He, he, I don't think I'm head army. I probably should have half armor, maybe no util for him. Yeah. So yeah, basically half armor, no util. Yeah. Exactly how the money works out. I I reckon that's like a little bit of sort of almost like a tilt scenario where you're like, all right, let's just try and double or whatever. Like you know, nothing else is working. We're kind of getting beat up pretty badly here. Got, we have to try something. So give it your all. Anyone wants to all try and, and go for it and see if it's going to make a difference. They did almost lose a player there towards the bomb site. That would have been disastrous detour, but he's allowed to live for a little while longer. It's PR again. He's been a real beast in this game. I was giving him a little bit of credit. He's got 17 kills. So him individually, sure, that's been really sick. MBQ continues to play well. They got a couple of players there that are that are sort of shining above and beyond, but it hasn't been enough to get them competitively into this into this map, unfortunately. A minute and ten seconds. Bring the bomb back towards middle. This could have been a good start here for Czech Republic in this round, so we'll see. It, it's likely that they can do something with this. True. Forzy. Towards doors. The Molotov might force him to take a bit of damage. He does. The shot doesn't connect either. This position, though. A lot of damage being dealt with the flames. An interesting decision there from Hungary to fight through them rather than respect them. And it will cost them their lives and probably this round, too. The left downs are just two. With five on the other side, I, I think you've probably just got to save it. Yeah, I any like there's not much to accomplish by pushing, right? Probably not going to be doing that much damage, and even if you do, it's not like Czech Republic are going to lose a round and keep fighting, right? They've got the backs to the wall, so overall, wait it out. Czech Republic guys, what, I mean, they don't have. They still need some money in the bank, obviously, just to buy, you know, the, the extra grenades and the whatever else they might want to get. So I doubt they'll be pushing all in to try and find the remaining guns here. Probably better just keep it cool. We'll make it a 12 to 7 scoreline, which means the road back is still real far after this one. But I mean, again, it can be done. We talked about the the Belgian comeback when we were talking about this. And I mean, that something like that can happen again, even if it's a little bit out in the future still. Yeah. It's five rounds being that deficit. It, it's not impossible. It's just highly, highly improbable. At a 12 to 7 score line, the buy comes right back in for Hungary. And it's, it's pretty comfortable off the back of their saves, too. So it's fine. Lose this one, though, and it, and it might throw a bit of a span in the works of what looked like it was going to be a super clean ending. Oh, but Fleev, can have a look in. I mean, Corey's still in pretty electric. Fleev's looked good. And same for Aaron. Basically, the big names on this side. That kind of core we've played together in the past and know each other very well. The more experienced heads on this side too, showing exactly what experience they're bringing to the table. Oh, that is very close to being a kill through. Fleev dropped down to 18. Still alive, just barely. Double smoke. Landing on either side of the obelisk here at the B-bomb site. But there is a nice time counter smoke coming out. So you can see Detours jump in to see if anyone's sneaking through it. All really good movements to try and stop the T's from having any kind of surprise. And he's ready. Once that smoke fades, he's going to throw down the Molotov. And again, just really, really slow them down. I think Hungary are kind of realizing, yeah, that's not really working out for us here. Flea's going to be going down. He was already tagged up from earlier. Detour getting the assist there. But leader four versus five. I don't know. This could be a little bit of an interesting scenario. If they win this round, there's not enough money on Hungary's side to buy again. So it could be almost up to like a 12-9 scoreline if they win this one. 
Nice swing from Pierre. Does he expect a second? He, he now does know. Tap on that corner, and he actually delivers a double. That's huge. We all heard the tick on the Molotov PR. That's a beautiful 3K at the end, just to make sure there's no doubt in that round. Czech Republic still not dead just yet. This round, a non-starter for the most part. I expected they at least had a hungry, but they're, they're actually going to go into at least a hero AK, if not a force buy. I don't know if anybody is going to buy around Aaron here. Big call for him to go for that, that sort of hero AK, because you lose this round, his money is going to be a little bit short. I'm assuming it's just going to be a hero AK buy, but at least have a tactical pause and a conversation for, for, for them how they want to play this one out. But yeah, yeah big call. Cool. You lose this. Aaron's money is going to be in a bit of a worse aware state next round too. We shall see. Only four rounds. It's it's getting more and more likely, but it's still the big thing of just any sort of mistake, any hiccup off for Czech Republic, and we're going to three. Yeah. That's also why I'm kind of a little bit curious to, to not see Hungary. Maybe they'll still do it, but I, I expect that they're going to throw in a round which is going to be a hell of a lot quicker. Um, like go for a rush towards middle, maybe even like buy a mat 10 or something and just kind of jump around the corner because they, the way that they're playing it slowly like this, the problem is Czech Republic, they are individually quite strong in the moment. So when you're edging away around the corners, looking for a couple of openings, see if you can win some aim fights. Well, if they're winning all the aim fights, then they're going to win all the rounds. Um, Aaron's going to take a kill there, but we'll get traded right away. Four versus four. But yeah, I, I've, I feel like that's kind of the... Uh, that's the way to go with it. Change the pace a little bit. Try and go quick at it. Nice spray down from PR. My God, he's had a resurgence as an individual. 24 kills. Yeah, Neo, that's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it is. It is. PR. About 25. We're 4K at the end as well. I mean, I'll always highlight him when I cast him. He's, from what I've seen over the last few months, especially with Mars HD becoming actually one of the more dominant sides in tier 2. There was one point where... The, the Mal's first team, the best team in the world, ranked on HTV, and in my opinion, Mal's and XT were at least top three in tier two, if not in that number one conversation. And PR was a large portion of it. Very talented guy. And this round, I guess this map, more so than the last, we are seeing exactly why and sort of what he can do. 12 9. A buyout here. If Hungry lose it, don't get a bomb plot. We could be discussing the potential of OT. Yeah, most definitely. Corey, though, opening up, getting a kill. That's the kind of start you want. And look at the change pace here. It's a lot quicker. It's a lot less waiting around. MBQ, one shot missed, and he's going to be dead. Nice tactical call here from Hungary. The speed change, I think, is absolutely what made the difference. Just one opening, and then no more hesitation. They power on through, and I think the writing's on the wall once again here. It's Corey taking down Detour again individually. 22 kills for Corey. Been a really great performance from him. And PR, he might have beat Corey in, in terms of the individuals, but it's not going to make a difference here. He's still going to go down 13 to 9, and we will see a third map here. Yes, yeah, we will. I mean, all we said is one hiccup, one little mistake, and yeah. that will be that. And, and that's, what, that's what you get. I, I think that's the right call by Hungary at the end. Obviously, in hindsight, it definitely is. But when things have been going a little rough, and you've been trying to work the map, but it's not working... Just call something quick. Just get up in their face. Just play off the mechanics because it sometimes can make the difference. And just to update you, like I have been doing all the way through. So Kosovo were, I think it was 12-7 up on their map pick. They showed, okay. went to overtime. They lost overtime. So that's going to a third map. Now Latvia Ooh, okay. took away that map, which is pretty sick. Germany beat Austria 2-0 in this series. So they are guaranteed now to be going towards the World Esports Championships. And Portugal are getting ever closer as well. They are one round away, uh, nice. of, as of the time of speaking, to beating Norway in a 2-0 fashion as well. So some, some cool results starting to roll through. Germany and nearly Portugal are locked in towards uh, Riyadh in November. And, well, similar to our map, uh, the Latvia and Kosovo game has gone to a third. Damn, okay, okay. It's interesting to see uh, Kosovo struggling to close out that game. That would have been interesting if they could have powered on through, but I guess uh, they take a third map there to, to settle the score on that one. Um, yeah, I don't know. The highlights here coming through, and again, I've got to say this was a quite a maybe even one-sided is a little bit harsh but it was kind of hungry in the driving seat for most of this game Czech Republic trying right at the end to make up for it but I it just felt like it was in it was in Hungary's control the whole time yeah no exactly I, there was these periods where especially in that second half we were looking at it and saying 
maybe there's a chance here for Czech Republic, but it actually required quite a monstrous comeback and a real, real resurgence that, again, is such a rarity. So, yeah, I think all in all, Hungary made that map look comfortable. We know why they picked into it. It makes sense. It's a map in which they played a fair decent amount as well in towards the group stages, uh, which obviously were very successful for them, and we can see yeah. exactly why. Now we go towards that Mirage, and a similar thing now where we have to look at this and say, can actually this now be that catalyst in heading in towards map number three for Hungary where map number one, they weren't really away, away on Vertigo. They weren't hitting their shots. They didn't look, at least individually, like maybe they were all there. And, um, you know, now they start to find that format. And now coming towards Mirage, they, they're ready for that in towards this third map. A map in which they probably just generally are going to be a little bit more comfortable with in comparison to Vertigo, which, which looked very janky for them. Yes, it did. Well, it's a good thing that we have a, uh, <clears throat> a third map here to decide the whole thing, right? We were looking for the best team to make their way through. Hard to tell which one that is. I think it could be it could be kind of an open question for, for map number three. So we'll find out once we get there, obviously. But um, generally speaking, um, we've got a couple of people online that we wanted to see here. Corey um, playing super well. But I think for, for PR, the individual resurgence was super encouraging. That was fun to see. Um, third map should be good. Yes, exactly that. I'm looking forward to Mirage. It should be pretty decent. I mean, we need to see... I guess PR individually look very good, but as a team, we need to see Czech Republic come in towards that yes. one. And similar things set that tone. The, the way they did it in towards Vertigo, I think at times been a little bit too loose. It took them a while to get going in that first half. They struggled to kind of get online, and because of it, it, it cost them. So we're going to have to wait and see. But regardless, we're going to throw this one to a break. When we are back, we're heading in towards map number three. It's Mirage up next. I'll see you soon. Oh, yes. We are back once again. A third and deciding map here. The battle between Hungary and Czech Republic rages on. And so far, it's been, uh, I don't know, it's like they've been trading maps, obviously. Uh, we started on Vertigo into Anubis. And now on the third map for Mirage, we're going to decide who is the better team, which I think is a really open question. I don't have a strong opinion. Um, do you got a sense of who's going to be taking this third one? You know, I, I think off the back of that, I'm actually now starting to lean towards Hungary. Not in the sense just because they're taking the map, but I think it's just they've woken up. The, the individual okay. looked a little better. I think they felt a little bit more on the ball. I, I probably, at least from... Well, I, we'll see in, in hindsight at the tail end of the series, but my assumptions that Vertigo is not a good map for them. On paper, I looked at the core. For both of these two sides, they don't play it a lot. So I just think... Um, for Hungary, maybe they were a little bit surprised to see it even get picked in. I think it's probably the big thing. They didn't go for a ban. They banned out something else. Um, and because it's a map in which the Daniel Eklot uh, core never play, I think they were probably quite surprised. Like, they're picking into this and they, they weren't ready. I think it's probably the way I'll go about it. So maybe caught off guard, hmm. a little shocked, and that did come back to bite them. Anubis is always a good map for them. They played it great, uh, a fairly good amount in towards the groups and same with Mariah's they played it I think once in the groups and they were able to pick, pick up a win with it so I, I I now go back to looking at this and saying is this going to be uh, a sign of things to come maybe probably I I think Hungary are a side who at least in terms of their individuals are talented enough they also got a win against Ireland on Anubis which the Islands side looked pretty good um you know they yeah. were so close to qualifying as well they beat Denmark the game that we uh oh no we didn't cover that one that was a close game though we, we would do the game simultaneously to that one yeah. um which we did the Slovakia Wales game. That happened at the same time. Uh, they won on the Nubis there as well. So that's always been a good map for Hungary for for, for them. So uh, Mirage Image of the Sea, right? What are we going to get out from Czech Republic in response? Because they just, at least when they came online, it was too late. We, we saw it right at the tail end, but by that point, job was kind of done. Yeah, unfortunately, they 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 could they couldn't mount the comeback quite quick enough. So um. Yeah, and again, another map that uh, we all kind of know and love here on Mirage. We definitely expect the players to be able to play it at a high level. Curious to see if PR is going to continue his individual resurgence. Um, Corey on the other side, I think, was the top player. Uh, so, you know, two of them, you don't, I, it's unlikely that you're going to be just like leveling up throughout a whole game and playing better and better and better, but it does happen sometimes. Uh, and it's always kind of fun to see when, when an individual is just able to really have a strong uh, series overall. So PR, again, slow start. The comeback for him, I think, started already on the first map. At the end of it, he started to play better, and then he just kind of kept on going. So, yeah, more of that, and, and they could be in a good spot right now. Yeah, and for those who's joining us, I guess I can update you on scores elsewhere. Germany, 2-0 in their series, uh, pretty easy. Map number one was 13-8, map number two, 13-7. Nice and simple stuff. All in okay. all for them, as 2-0 over Austria. The other game that's happening in, in that side of the bracket, oh, that's our side of the bracket, the other side of the bracket is... Uh, Norway, Portugal. Uh, Portugal took them out number one, 13 to 5. Pretty comfy. They were at a massive lead 
in map number two. And I said, they're probably going to take it. They actually choked it out in towards overtime, uh, but they're Ooh. currently 15 to 12 up in OT. So that they're on the, the precipice of taking that one and going, yeah, to, yeah, going to the tour, taking that 2 0, of course, which locks in their spot. The other game, like I already mentioned, um, Kosovo up quite a lead and they also choked that one out and Latvia ended up winning 16-14 which is pretty huge Hungary won the knife they the start they decided to start on CC side okay yeah that makes sense I don't really mind it they've got no diffuse kit no grenades it's all armor and USP and it's going to be a very tough defense here for the two people that are near the catwalk they're trying to see if they can stay alive for now, but yeah, already tagged up. There's a bit of a quick flank coming in, but is that going to really make a difference here? Kafita able to take down Aaron, and the bomb is planted here. It's a nightmare round already. Oh, and it might actually just get worse and worse. Having no util is a, a big decision that you don't really see get made anymore. I mean, no util, no kit. When you're probably expecting that you're going to have to retake in, in some instances on a map like Mirage too, it's a bold decision and one that you know very obviously hasn't hasn't paid off and yeah obviously it's come back to bite them here i mean in a in a matter of moments this round never even got started cherry probably just take one for free off the rip yeah they're just saying cool thanks we'll definitely be picking that one up and didn't even didn't even take much of a fight right on the bomb side itself the closest we kind of got to somebody contesting the actual bomb plant was is it Aaron or who is somebody who's just like checking yeah, in on catwalk yeah. and getting gushed immediately? So that's like, that's doesn't feel good when that's how you kind of lose the site. You're like, oh, okay, one person getting getting tagged up, and that's kind of almost the end of it. So nicely done from Czech Republic. We are off to the races. Second round is coming up here, and we have an investment now. Look at this. You Get your app spreadsheet out. Oh, yeah. I'm opening it as we speak, going straight on towards Google Drive to find that one. Um, you know how I feel about these. It's yeah. a big call, especially after a absolutely non-existent pistol round two with only the one kill. You're coming in with a FAMAS or a couple of FAMASs as, as your your best weaponry with half armor two. No head armor, bar one. It means those Galils are even scarier than they already would be in this yeah. round two. So uh, we'll see. They, they, they're going to be crisp as all hell to, to win this one. I'm already kind of tentatively hovering over the failed section right now <laughs> yeah ready to <laughs> ready to mark them up i uh, will see it's worked every once in a while and like you said i think you know it's true some early deagle shots and we can change our minds we can start to say all right you know what actually this is doable but without those deagle shots to really set up the rest of the rifles here it just feels so unlikely but we'll give them the benefit of the doubt and see what happens it's going to be pr to take down aaron to begin with bomb oh it does get planted and that's probably all you need Sucks that he couldn't get to live behind it, but once the bomb is planted, the clock obviously ticks back in against the CT side. So, yeah, they're going to make a run for it here. No real surprise. Yep, and I preemptively put the notch there on the fail section, and I can keep it. Nice and yeah. You don't need to make any adjustments. Uh, it is a 2-0 start. Not a huge fan. That's so far now in these quals. Five failed, three successful, which actually even statistically isn't that bad. Um, but... That's with such a small pool of data and in you know six months time or whatever we'll, we'll see how that kind of pays out but a two no star for Czech republic is good for them of only the one casualty two even more so and the yeah. fact that the only thing safe hungry is a famas and an mp9 one smoke it's not even really something they can kind of work around in this next round they're gonna have to they can't like kind of reinforce back in sometimes you see sides who maybe only lose one or two casualties and they're thinking okay Let's just go again, right? That, that one... Yeah, we'll try one more time. We never got going. This time, I, you, just, you just can't. You want to have at least kind of 2K in the back pockets or in and around there to the buy-in towards the next the rifles and the util. So this one, again, feels like a bit of a non-starter. It would have to be a bit of a miracle out from either Corey or Coolio. I, I just yeah. don't think Czech Republic are going to give them those fights for free. They'd be playing off each other very well. Yeah. They're just playing in, like, groups of two or three here. Mm hmm Stack onto the B-bomb site where nobody from the Czech Republic side is. That's, I guess, another way to try and make these rifles have an impact is if, if you, if they run into a stack and there's a FAMAS and an MP9 somewhere in between everything else, it's not a bad idea. It just, this just isn't the round where it's going to happen, unfortunately, for them. So, some shots are ringing out here and it should be a bomb plant and a very swift round to follow. It's all gone according to plan here. Some, some slightly easy rounds for Czech Republic, to be honest. All three of them at the start here are just 
not much of a battle uh, behind back. It's Aaron finally with a little bit of something to say. Gonna steal an AK now. That could be interesting. Um, surely they're gonna win the round anyway. But um, yeah, the bomb plant delayed for hours. I have no idea why they haven't planted the bomb like a long time ago. But um, they're finally doing it now. Yes. Yeah. Will PR expect the USPS or Javi? I don't think he clicked. Oh, if he didn't peek, I think he might have gone. Could have been a there. Yeah. But not the case. So this round never really got going. At least Aaron's got an AK. That's honestly not the worst thing in the world. Anything else, though, would be uh, sort of outlandish. Aaron is sort of sticking around, but I think you'll realize, <laughs> yeah, let's not go for this. So he's got no armor as well. That bomb is even more scarier for him than it is for the T's on the other side. And that's it. A 3 0 start. It's a pretty decent one. This is the third most yes. CT side of map in the pool uh, statistically. So to get a three off the rip like this, very, very important. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think ha having the AK, that could be kind of the start of a little bit of a, of, you know, something that goes the right way. We start to say, okay, listen up. It was a, it's a tough start, but we stole this AK. Let's put it to use in the next round and, um, and start to get back into it for Hungary. I do think it's important for them to get on the board really early on here. Don't want to be del delaying this any further. Round number All four. rifles. They got the AWP, which is good. FAMAS is the only lesser investment. Mid control taking for free. Again, this has actually been a, a big kind of point of priority for the Czech Republic, and, and it's working. Yes, it is. Smoke goes up. Oh, so much damage. How is he alive? Oh, he's not. Forcey somehow catches him. I was going to say he should have been dead anyway. But this is a bit slaughter. Aaron drops back down into Shadow, but he is going to get traded every single day of the week. They were all over him. Saved once again here for Hungary. And it's Czech Republic. They go fourth round. Wow. Are they safe? Yeah, they should be fine. There was a little, uh, it's like a temptation of like, uh, PR to go looking for a fight. And he, he's still poking around, but I don't think he'll catch them in rotation as they go deep into his apartments. This is this is quick. 4-0 in a matter of moments. And I think the most important thing is actually not even the speed of the rounds, it's the dominance of the rounds as well. Cheryl can't really even do anything too special. They're just walking into all the site and planting. Yeah, what a, what a beginning. You can even, if you don't look at it, they don't even have that many kills on the T side even. Yes. It's, it's not like they're, they're stacking up like tons of kills here. There's obviously been a couple of saves and everything else going on for Hungary, but it just means they're getting these rounds way easier than you would normally expect. And, well, that could be a bit of a problem going down the stretch of this game. Four and oh. And round number five. Yeah, saving a couple of guns, buying a little bit on the rest. They're sort of stretching their money as much as they can to make this the best round possible. And you know what? It's not half bad. So we'll give it to them in that sense. They're going to have a chance to resist in this round. But, um... The fact that they've picked up nothing yet on the CT side is cause for concern. Ooh, that felt like it should have hit, doesn't? Yes. Pretty big tag on towards Fleev as well. And then he's, I think, smoked out of that position. One did miss. I, I know a window smoke did miss there, but I think another one came. Yeah, and, and there we go. Replicated uh, what was meant to be. But early damage on towards him. Czech Republic, I said mid control has actually been a real priority for them. It's something Hungary have got to try and plug. That's a big weakness for them right now. Uh, no doubt it is. Coolio wanted to jump. Thought better of it. Could have been dangerous with an AK waiting on the other side. So for now, he's going to be fine. But this is at least a start here. Four versus five. Hungary with a one man lead. Going to be boosting up to try and get a bit closer while the smoke is up. Setting up a, a bit of a late round trick here that could really pay off for them. Corey, actually, he's not even late round trick. He just goes for it. I thought he was going to be kind of the, the bait for the rest of the bomb site, But he's already down. Four versus three. They're pushing on out. 40 seconds left. Oh, jump Ooh. over through the smoke. What a bold play from MBQ. And Aaron's going to go down as well. Dropped by him. He couldn't get the Molotov off in time. So he's going to go down. The bomb is going to get planted here, but... 4C, what have you got for us? Can you actually win this and clutch it for your team? They've got the crosshair right there, but it's a no. wide swing. He steps out right next to Fleev's crosshair. And now Savvy's on the other side. 4C, not sure where to look, and he will get down. Oh, he had no idea there was a second player. That's unfortunate, but still, for Hungary, it's great news.
It is. They absolutely needed that. No twist about it. Let that round slip, and I'm already saying we're in trouble here. Fawzi gave it a good go. I think he just doesn't expect both of them to be on top of each other because the rifle hadn't actually taken a shot yet. I think that's basically where it all falls apart for that post barn. He's, he's pretty exposed in the open. Javi swings out, and he'll get his kill. So there's a first, which is good. The seat side needs so many more, though. I mean... The way I look at it, in a similar vein, on the flip side to Anubis, is you've got to get bare minimum of seven on your CT side. You know, for yeah. a map like Mirage, the way it's played out these days, the T side doesn't get as much of a luxury as it used to on Go. You've really got to make it look considerably more solid than that T side. And the fact that Czech Republic are looking so clean so far is pretty damning. That's a great flash, but there's just support there. Kafida's playing anti, but it's PR full blind who gets it regardless. Yeah, I have no real criticism for that kind of play. Like, I, I agree. That is a really sick flashbang. It's a good shot. That probably works like nine times out of ten. But it just, unfortunately, this is one of the few times where it doesn't play out in his favor. Going to be losing that early fight. And, um, yeah, that's going to come back to, to potentially haunt them a little bit here. Speaking of grenades and flashbangs, look at how many are on the Czech Republic side and how few are there left on the Hungarian side here. They don't have a lot to play with. It means retakes are going to be very, very hard. I think probably if you want to win this round on the CT side, you need to stop them from even getting the bomb planted because you're not going to be having like a whole wall of smokes for a sick like protocol to retake the bomb site. One smoke going up towards that uh, jungle position. Looking over it, one player here. The rest trying to rotate in behind it. Was he? Holding as the rifles get a lot of mileage out and towards the site itself. I think that smoke actually went into a sandwich, I think. It might have actually smoked a teammate. Uh-oh. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it did actually smoked a teammate. It was meant to go over towards jungle, but the fights are still favorable. And they could continue in that fashion. Coolio does trade one back. The flash keeps them at bay, but a 2v3 of how low Coolio is as well. I don't know if this round's going to start. I say that for you. That's a big shot. Look at the time, too. Yeah. Oh, smoke up there. With the time that was left, if he got one kill on the guy planting the bomb, the round would have probably been over right there. Not probably, it definitely would have been over, but instead, smoked up, and now they're in a little bit more trouble here. 4Z, back with the AWP, and snuck for the smoke as Kafidi, right? He's actually going to come back around, but still, this is looking very hard on the retake. Again, they don't have any grenades either. They've got the kits, sure. A little bit of a flash into the corner, but the clock is running down low on this one. Kafita, even if he's tagged, he's going to get the kill. And Forcey will take one more Czech Republic to pick up the round. And everything is falling apart here for the Hungarian side. They've got a little bit of money in the bank, but not enough to make it a real buy here. Wow, they're in so much trouble. Yeah, they are. This is, at least for the, the kind of time being, a pretty damning start where there's just been nothing on offer. Now, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that maybe they're T-sides where they'll come alive, but they've got to give themselves a bit of space and comfort before going on towards that T-side. You know, by at least making this first half competitive, I said that you've got to be getting at least, you know, normally I would say seven rounds on the CT side. That feels like a bit of a luxury right now. Again, just a side note, that window smoke's missed for the, like, third time in a row for... Czech Republic, but they're still being punished. It's just, it's just a, kind of a funny thing, but they, yeah, they're missing that window smoke consistently. I don't even know they realize that they're missing it, but somebody, unfortunately, doesn't know their spawn lineups. Yeah, and I mean, <clears throat> it's kind of funny, but also you, you have to say those small details can really can really mess up around sometimes, so yeah, yeah. get it fixed before it costs you too much. Some deagles, one MP9 and armor, they are crossing their fingers and hoping that this is going to be somehow a powerful round. A round that can really get them back into the game here, Hungary. They need it so badly. And Czech Republic are taking a sweet time. They've got PR alone in the middle. Oh, he's got some backup now. I was going to say, I don't necessarily love him being alone here with the AK. Just don't leave a chance for them to, to take him down and steal the round back somehow. Make sure you are a little bit more grouped up than that. And they are now. So it's going to be an A split. There's at least numbers here. And BQ. Does he expect two to the right? I think is the big thing. Well, it doesn't really matter anyway. MBQ and Detour swing in and they deliver kills with ease. Aaron on the site. Does get himself one, but he's just barraged with maze to see him off. This round's done before it even starts. And a sixth now on the board. 
For sure, probably. I mean, this is a brilliant showing. Hunky are falling apart here. Yeah, unfortunately. Never really even getting into this map so far. Six to one, the scoreline. They have a lot of money coming into the next round, but absolutely zero momentum for them. The kills just not showing up for them at the moment. They got 10, what did they got? Like 13 kills overall on that side. That's uh, that's that's far from being enough. We're going into round number eight here. So we just expect a little bit more, but it's not really been happening yet. So I don't know what it'll take. Some kind of clutch, some kind of individual performance. Corey, again, he was fragging very well on the second map. Yeah. Right now, he's two and six. It's yeah, it's true. I mean, it's a, a complete kind of shadow of your former self style uh, 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 kind of situation where they need him. They, they really do. He's very important to Sony side. He plays a lot of these kind of high impact roles. And he's if he was playing well, I think these rounds start to flip in different ways, but he's not. He's struggling. He can't get active. Same for Fleev as well, the Orpa. I spoke about mid control being a real priority. The best way to counter that is with uh, a prominent and strong Orpa. It's just not happening. This time they're in the smoke hits. And they Good were job. going for a short jump, but they miss it. And they're struggling to get into the ladder jump. They will eventually get up there. I'm sure they're being heard, though. They are failing this jump. And I'm sure Kafida can hear this. Yeah. Taking a while. Aaron might not realize, but there's a T player right there in front of him. It's going to be cute to go down at the beginning. Kafida gets one, spins around. It's ready for Fleave. So much damage in the middle output from him. Three versus three. If they win this round two, Czech Republic, it might be all done for the Hungarian squad, but good job on them bringing it back into a one-man advantage. Not half bad at all. 4C trying to get into a better position with the AWP. The bomb is planted. PR, he's tagged up, but he's still alive. It could do some damage. Smokes playing at the edge of it. He's going to see that one player. Surely, yeah, instantly shot down. That's a nice kill. Back into a two versus two, and now they might get pushed right into the AWP. 4C. He's thinking about it. Oh, they're going to find PR on the other side. Still plenty of time for the defuse, but with that shot almost doing it, Coolio, he's one up bullet away from death here. He's picked up the kit in the meantime, and there's the shot from Forcey. It's well played at the end, and Czech Republic gets seven. This is already, I think, getting very... I mean, seven for me feels more than good enough. Any more for any more feels like we could just be banging the nails in the coffin for uh, this series and, and the quickest map of of all of them comes into the side which felt like had the potential to be probably the most even just because of its, I know. its mirage Every, everybody knows everybody loves mirage but Czech Republic are just playing it considerably better I mean Hungary with Lost Brothers are getting buys back out but it doesn't even matter guns aren't making a difference they are just simply put not competing that's it's so crazy but you're absolutely right like this this felt like from the first two maps that the third one should have been uh, a really, really close affair, but it hasn't come to fruition just yet. MBQ, I would say, continues to play well. Like he's up to 9-4. He's been playing well every single map that we've seen him so far. Um, so, you know, maybe a name to watch out for in the future. Uh, definitely getting getting some good reps in on these different maps. That's pretty impressive. Again, just, you know, stability in playing is kind of undervalued sometimes, but if you can show up to every game and just kind of have a, a good performance, that can go a long way. Aaron for the first. We'll take that. That's a small positive. Aaron's still sticking around. The flash will gift him a second. He's self-sufficient right now for Aaron, but it's working. He'll eventually get traded out, but Corey with a fadeaway bullet finds his, dips away, stays alive. So keeping the numbers in a solid place. With how much damage has been dealt towards Kafida too? Surely this is going to be the second. Surely towards Hungary. Yeah, it's looking like that. Would take a real collapse in the round. Detour's actually managed to sneak past. I don't think Corey's seen him, but he is kind of walking out. All right, it's going to be Fleave on the other side, and they will be fine. So I think that was the only real risk is that Detour's kind of got into the back line somehow, and nobody was there to catch you. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's all going to work out for them. So a 7-2 to two score line is coming up here. There's nothing Kafita could do about it. I'm going to try and get another kill just to be a little bit annoying, but even that is not going to happen. So one step in the right direction is... All the work is still ahead of them. Uh, yeah, I, I I think if you can get up towards five, it's still not completely out of the realm as a possibility. Eight four already feels pretty damning, so it's good that Hungary get that. It needs to be the start of a few more, without a shadow of a doubt. 
it's good though. I mean, at least for them on an individual basis, for Aaron thinking, okay, I'm feeling confident. I used to hit a couple of shots in that round. I'm, I'm back maybe a little bit. The whole team needs to kind of join them though. Window smokes are now being consistent, which is really good. He needs to uh, ta try to tap away on just the edge of it to, to open up some space and get information. Nothing spotted too. Now, once again, it looks like they want to go towards A. There's a few players here to meet them too. Big fight for Flea to take. It's a risky one in the open. Thankfully, he'll dip away. And a Molotov will slow them down. And now, Hungry have rotated his four over towards A. Yeah, this is a really, really big presence for uh, for the CT side to be showing up with. See how long they can really keep it. I mean, that's, that's kind of the other problem, right? Like, one thing is being here, but another thing is sticking around with all these people. They're going to try and push forward with it. And they get traded, so they lose a bit of patience. Nicely done from Corey. If you don't win that fight, I think the round might be close to done with. Smoke to land behind him. Kafita will eventually come up the underpass and try to help out, assist this A split. But it's not going to be right now. It's still a little bit into the future, so... We'll see how long Corey can stick around. Towards CT spawn, it's Fleave hanging out. He's got a Molotov. Oh, Kafita just jiggling it out. That is so smart. Well played. Shows the tip of his gun saying, do you want to you take a couple of shots? If you do, I'm definitely going to swing you. And then it's a two on three. Sleep just waiting. Oh, the question for me is when does he decide to pounce? And that Molotov is going to force him in the open. He's being held for. That's played perfectly. Kafida's initial Molotov and a flash combo come through. Coolio now 1v3 turn 1v2. And they're going to split up. And... This is kind of the only time where it's perfect because it's an immaculate kind of crossfire. I He doesn't want any part of it. He's going to get out of it. Call for yeah. the save. Keep hold of his rifle. And an eighth for Czech Republic on T side of Mirage. I don't see much of a world in which they can kind of get back into this. Right now, it definitely doesn't feel like it. It's um, slipped out of their hands very, very early on. And there's no consecutive rounds. There's no momentum being built. It's just a struggle every single time. Not that much saved either on the Czech Republic side, but who cares? They have some money. They have the rounds. At this point, yeah, it's, it's in the bag for them. They just need to keep the focus up. Keep playing like this, and they should be able to walk away with it. And I believe you said earlier, it's qualification here if you win this one. So um, a lot is on the line. It is. I mean, this is, I mean, it's one of the lucky things where if you are to lose here, you go into the lower bracket anyway. So you're not completely out of the realms of, of qualification, but you'd much more kind of prefer to just win one, one best of three and guarantee it. Regardless of all yes. the results, you've got your spot. That's it. Join the likes of uh, kind of Germany, for example, who quite cleanly took theirs. Forzi gets gifted. That one, there's no trade either. Javi, he will drop with I mean, nothing really to offer. And, and the, the, the trade shot not being connected either gives Czech Republic all the time now to set up and a push in the smoke. That's such a big call as Forzi makes it three in the round. That is huge. Jumping in towards the fight. You can just see the discipline going out the window now for Hungary. <laughs> the, the panic is fully set in. Corey, nice enough shot there at the edge of the Molotov. But at the end of the day, will it mean really make a difference? Definitely not here. They're back in once again, trying to save a little bit. I mean, that's kind of been the main experience, I think, for Hungary in this first half. It's just been trying to find creative ways to save a couple of guns here or there. And I don't think he, he's not going to save this one. The hunt is on. Oh, they're going to run him down. Got to be careful as well that you don't forget to reload this AWP. Two bullets left. And he's shot in the back here. So nothing is saved. Nothing is rescued. It's Czech Republic just savaging Hungary at the moment. They are. There's, there's, there isn't a competition. These rounds haven't even been close for the most part as well. I mean, you can see the confidence. Forzi pushes a smoke and gets two more off the back of the initial fight. Coolio, I don't even know. I'm not even going to try and explain that. I don't know what the decision was there, but maybe some information that he, he maybe the, all of them were over towards A, so that's why he's kind of trying to dive in towards lower, but it doesn't work out for him. Tries to catch them off guard. Tries something a little funky. Doesn't work out. 9-2. We could very rapidly be... Uh, discussing the, i mean it already kind of feels like maybe the beginning of the end yes i i mean <laughs> it, the, i mean obviously if there's a big resurgence from hungary somehow uh like not even just in terms of like the rounds individually you see some players were like all right here we go like this is a 
a big one versus three that's been won or something like that, then then it's worth having a different kind of conversation. But for now, yes, yeah. they're not really showing us a lot of that. So it's, it's very, very hard to to put up a, a likely scenario where this could turn out differently. Round number 12, and they are setting up for a classic A execute. There's nobody on the bomb site. And it's not necessarily the end of the world for the CT side. Obviously, you can just try and play it as a retake. We do have this kind of weaponry. The retakes are a lot harder, but there is a way. Fleev is on a bit of a flanking mission. Oh, and look at this. Corey in a jumping shot. No way. He hit the headshot jumping over the smoke like that. Well, that's how you get the job done, I guess. I wasn't I wasn't counting on that one. Yeah. 45 seconds. Vembi Q so low. And they're not even abided by Bogdan's law here. But Forzy walking his way forward to try and... At least, if you can make it into a 2v3, it's not impossible. But they just haven't taken any damage. That's the, that's the big thing for me. The only thing that they don't have working against them is Util. And that's not a bad shot. Or he gets one, nobody trades. But they're grouped up here. Wants to isolate any unscopes at the worst possible time. Four points of HP. Three kills to find. 15 seconds. Not going to happen. Corey will trade. Hungary just get a third at the end there. I don't think it's good enough, though. I don't think they've given themselves any sort of a chance uh, in towards the one. It would require, a, again, a miraculous comeback, which doesn't really feel like it's on the cards here. That's a beautiful T-side put up here by Czech Republic, which has put them so close now to guaranteeing their spot at the World Finals. Yeah, I I mean, you know, barring anything, like a total change of, of the dynamic here, it does feel like it's super unlikely. Huge mm -hmm. lead for Czech Republic. Going into the second half here, they're not going to have any utility or even a kit on the Czech Republic side. They're saying, we are going to outduel you. Although this is very bold. Kavita running forward. PR's right behind him. Got to be careful. If you start missing those bullets, they could get a little bit spicy. But so far, they're going to be allowed to live. All right. I thought maybe there was going to be more of a swing happening there for the T side. They were trying to really run them down. Once you hear that CTs miss a couple of USB bullets, I mean, sometimes that's, a, that's your signal to go. But they will play it a little bit more slowly here. Setting up for... The one smoke and the flash that they do have on the T side. A little bit of damage out to a Javi might make him not useless in this round, but at least uh, not have as much impact as he would hope. He's going to have to try and catch somebody off guard. Forzy playing jail, detour playing towards get right. It's a good setup, but all for nothing as they are heading towards A. Oh, Aaron just turns around and MBQ's right there for him. Detour will get one through the smoke in response. Kafida hasn't been cleared from ticket just yet. It kind of looked like... It looked like MBQ thought he was in the smoke and he just wasn't. It was like very uh, strange position. Yeah. But good job for Hungary so far. Yeah, this is what we need. More of this. Detour's going to be going down. 4C trying to make his way through, but... They do call it the murder hole for a reason. And Kafida, one versus three, obviously not going to be winning this round. So Hungary will take the pistol on the second half. And that's, that's the first step in the right direction. Just, you know, forget the first half of your Hungary and just uh, pretend like you just got started. Well, let's say if it gets to 9-7, I'll, I'll give them... Some okay. sort of look in here. That's where that's where I'll look at it. Anything you know, if if Czech Republic get a tenth any time between now and nine seven, I then go completely hundred percent back in their favor. Nine seven. I think that's fair. I think that that's probably done rounds the... too, right? That's the big thing in my mind. It's like it's all well and good funny pistols. I mean, half the scene think pistols are RNG anyway. So, I uh, that's the way I I, I look at this. The big thing I I, I want to see now is Czech Republic. I can say don't force by here because you have the gun. You have multiple gun rounds out before you come into it. But they are going to force. I mean, I guess they have so many rounds to work with in arrears that it's not the kind of end of the world. But MP9 Scout, few upgraded pistols, not an easy round to convert. But they are at least gamble stacking a bit, which is probably the right way to go about it. I think so. I prefer this. There's something sort of almost a little bit deflating watching a team with no, you know, real rifles or anything try to play as if though they had the rifles and they're sort of, I'm like, just roll the dice, be a little bit adventurous. It's more fun this way. Scouts playing alone over by the catwalk position. Don't have any, don't have any strong opinions about this one, but obviously it could be, uh, 
Could be interesting to see if they're going to be able to uh, do a little bit of damage with it. That's usually where these rounds become really fun is when you get some tags going on with the scout on the CT side and, and it, it's going to work out a little bit differently. Nicely Ooh. done from Kafita, but it'll oh, actually it's, it's MBQ who's going to get that first one. Detour might be able to get it and he will. Bomb. That's disastrous. That's the bomb down. I should drop a smoke. That's perfect. He upgrades to a Galil. Even better. Uh oh. Yeah. This uh -oh, might just right. be a little awkward. Xavi don't need to answer back. Catches PR. The elevated angle is super strong here to hold for pushes out from ramp. They kind of see each other at a similar time. It's just one sees the body, this sees the legs. So time. generally the CT has the better thing. And yeah, you are right. The, the time is of the essence here. They are being flanked too. Yes, they are. All right. So they're going to get that kill, but now they have to run straight back in. 4C. What have you got for us? One kill on the right player right now could win the round. And Ooh. here's Savvy going down. Aaron tries to pick it up. The bomb is has to be planted right now. He's going to get time for it. He will get the bomb plant here. I'm pretty sure. Yes, he will. And that might be enough. Force he realizes. Oh, he had the time. A little bit of a grenade out wide. <laughs> he does get dinged, but Ooh. still, he will live. Aaron is going to be saving Hungary here. Just barely winning the round. That is ridiculously close. Oh, my God. 19 points of HP. He Absolutely. is extremely extremely lucky but it's not a bad force by in all fairness all down to a you know 1v1 at the end there and getting a tag so that you're forcing hungry to reinvest in quite heavily however they've got a fifth they've now got a sixth to come off the back of it too they're, they're making this much closer than it probably should have been we should we, the other option would be you just give them up the fifth there and then you buy in towards this round now you would have had rifles and you would have had kind of all the youth to work with and the rest this one not a hell of a lot. One MP9, few upgraded pistols, nothing too damning. On close. Pistol gets the first. What about shot from Kafida? He hasn't moved. He's going to go back again for seconds. That's a double for the P250. Surely not. Thankfully, we'll get traded. Two versus three here. I don't know. I mean, those kind of clutches, right? For, for Aaron in that last round, those are the kinds that, that are going to make... You know, like, the team is going to get fired up. People are going to be yelling in the in the discord of the team see whatever he'll use right so that's important that gives a little <laughs> bit of energy back into it although i say that as fleeve gets run down pia with a headshot what on earth is going on how are they losing so many fights there's gonna be coolio no. dying and just like that czech republic retake the bomb site with no no reason to they have no no none of the none of the weapons they needed none of the grenades or anything they just won a couple of great fights there from pr that's a full eco. I mean, more or less. They have one MP9, Absurd. but it, it, it's the pistols that are doing all the work. A P250 getting two here is just ridiculous. And the fact that they fight him isolated too, they give him 1v1s, that is just the fundamental error. So credit, credit to Czech Republic. They, they just don't seem like they have any sort of a thought process about losing right now. Such a good first half. And winning that, I mean, it, this is where, I mean, that round in, in particular could even be the straw that breaks the camel's back. That's the one that could absolutely kill you. Five, ten, and for Hungary, I mean, they have no funds to work with, no bomb plant to at least alleviate some of those pressures. They have to go for a, a kind of a lesser investment here if they want to buy next. And we're talking about a gifted 11 and basically one gun round left for Hungary to keep them alive in the map, in the series for, of course, that potential of the World Esports Championship spot. I mean, it, it's just how quickly things are falling apart. They've taken attack pause. They've had a discussion, what's gone wrong, and of course, you know, a lot is is the, the the main point that we're kind of trying to drive home. They've just not shown up to play here. Oh, definitely not. Ten to five. That that round I, I think that kind of puts uh puts a fine point on it. That's that you see that and you think, okay, that's that's what's been the problem for Hungary here. Unfortunately. That last round, Aaron clutching it in a in a nice one versus two, and then it's kind of all for nothing at the end of it here. Deagles are out on the T side. But this game is completely falling apart. Hungary, so good on the second map, but PR did some really good display of his mechanics. I know you said it when we saw them play the first time around, but, um, you know, slowly but surely, I'm being converted into a little bit of a believer myself, I've got to be honest. He does go down eventually, but that was just a Deagle headshot, but... Yeah, that's long range to make that AK work, and he, he got three quick kills to to try to seal the round, I've got to say. Even if there's a little bit of a return here, there's surely no way Czech Republic can lose this one. Probably the case. Coolio's low. 
Fleeves tagged, doesn't have armor. So this one should be done. Just don't overfight the detail here. Drops a smoke to even maybe sell the ruse that he's falling away. And they can just play out from Delpan. How to support a cathedral at range. And he'll get there in the end. Second time of asking. So, 11 to 5. And like I said, this is the gun round. This is the last, probably, attempt for Hungry. If you want any sort of a chance in this one, it is now or never. But PR, good round from him. Looks pretty crisp. Pretty clean. I just don't think anything's going to stop it. This Czech Republic title is so close to the finish line. And it looks like win this one, they more or less guarantee it. I mean, yeah, it's um, looks almost inevitable at this point. Like the, the, even the slight signs of life coming out from the Hungarian side are just they evaporate so quickly that it's kind of hard to believe that it's going to be too exciting here. Four seat, take down Fleev to begin with. Four versus five, and Bomb has dropped the top mid. So Hungary, they are just investigating the middle, trying to get that basic map control that you do need on the T side to make almost any round work here. So. Are they going to try and get into the window? They could could go for a roost up here. I feel like anything is on right now. Just It's such a long way back for Hungary. They almost are no wrong choices. But it's 10. Where do they want to finish here? I think is the, the one I'm looking at now for Hungary. Because I guess you've got mid control. You have no information about short or even actually ladder for, for, for that matter. Window is always a priority, and they are getting pushed towards apartments. That's been spotted at the very least for Aaron. Just on the pixel, gets that gap. 40 seconds, though, fellas. We've got to make a decision. Yes, they're towards A, but the first fight isn't favorable. Detour playing up close, gets one. A ticket player of Kafida spotted. PR turning around, I thought was going to cost him his life, and he turns around perfectly for a double. It's done. It has to be. Coolio's all that's left. It's a 1v4, and he's playing around the site, and he gets caught in transition. Czech Republic cannot seem to lose everything, all the timings, all the 50-50s, and the jewels are slotting in play to them. This one, it has to be done. Hungary, another gun round, which finds nothing and not even a bomb plant. It's th that, This is it. They, they've just never got going into us Mirage at all. Yeah, that was, um, again, another very, very convincing round. We can only say it in so many ways, ladies and gentlemen. There is uh, not a lot being shown from Hungary, unfortunately. So mm -hmm. 12 to 5 is the scoreline. Czech Republic looking to see if they can make the qualification right here, right now. And they look like a fun team. I, I want to see this team play you know, further on, see them on land, see if they can keep up this level, because it's, it's been encouraging. A lot of great individuals, and just look like they have a good understanding of the game here. It's Corey to get the first kill, taking down PR, nearly sneaking a kill. Kafida, he had the right idea, but just overwhelmed at the end. So Hungary, with a forceful push to try and keep the dream alive. They need to win this, and they need to win another six rounds after that to get it into overtime. Grenades around the corner. Molotov will burn a couple of people, but it's not going to make a difference. It'll be hungry to pick up the first one. And again, like I said, six more to go is what they are looking for. Yes, it's better than nothing. It's, hey, a, a nice sort of spot where we can say a little silver lining. They've kept alive. A quick round has gifted them a sixth. Is this going to be a, something that they can replicate going forward? I don't think so. They've got to do it for six more rounds in a row. And there's a buy right back in for Czech Republic. So, I don't know. For Hungary, they, they need consistent amount of mistake coming out for Czech Republic for them to, to find this round in their favor. And they can't make any of themselves. It's just too much perfection needed, which it surely, surely is not going to be the case. It's sitting in the smoke here for PR. I like this. As long as, if he doesn't have a fight, he actually probably should be fine. But Coolio's holding for him. Yes, he is. He's got the right idea. He knows there could be someone up there. Doesn't have a confirmation yet. So PR's position is actually just getting more and more interesting. Coolio might think, well, listen, I've been keeping an eye on this. No one snuck through. Okay, he's going to grenade. So he kind of has the the read, but oh, look at this from Coolio. This is really smart. He's actually, oh, no, he doubts himself. He doesn't commit to it. And that could cost him the whole round. And as a result, the whole series He's looking for the multi-kill here. PR ready to set it up. It's a little bit Ooh. ugly, but it doesn't matter. Still gets a double. Ready to fight in the middle as well. Corey's in here in the smoke, but... Oh, Coolio. You knew. You kind of knew. The Spidey senses were there, but he just thought, no, there's no way. No way. 
But there absolutely was. Shot in the back is Corey, and it leaves Fleave on his own one versus five. And it gets a very convincing round. He's already been spotted out here. Czech Republic going to take the game 13 to six at the end, defeating Hungary. Well, I mean, especially considering how map number one and two felt, even if the score lines were kind of relatively similar, though, you know, I think map number yes. one 13 eight off the top of my head. It didn't feel as dominant as that. That was, it was a massacre. I mean, credit to Czech Republic. What a showing out from them. And of course, that does mean that they locked themselves in the World Esports Championship. They guaranteed a spot now oh, yes. because they won a best of three in the upper bracket, which is sick. And they'll be joining the likes of, of course, Germany, who beat Austria, as we mentioned earlier, in a 2-0 fashion. And Kosovo, who have beaten Latvia too. The Portugal-Norway game, it was a marathon, that one. It went to triple OT in 22 to 20. Norway took it and they've pushed that to a third map, which is just about to start. So that one seems to be going the, well, has gone the absolute distance. You've got triple OT and all the rest. Um, so I have to keep an eye on, see who ends up making it through from, from, from there. But, you know, we run through these highlights and you can just see, and just, there really just was never, ever a competition. Uh, Czech Republic cool. looked good from the get-go and it never let up. Yeah, even the sort of small signs of life, right? It, it didn't it didn't really rally the rest of the Hungarian squad. There was no point where you thought, okay, now they look alive again. So that happens sometimes, unfortunately. I mean, it's also the nature of playing a best of three. You go into a third map, maybe it's not exactly the map that you all love playing, and it just doesn't really play out the way that you were hoped for. But um, again, for Czech Republic, I've got to say, very encouraging. It was cool to see them play. Uh, we had fun with them last time where the, the game was a little bit easier. Uh, but taking down Hungary, which again is it should be a, a really, really strong team, uh, is definitely nothing to scoff at. So I've got high hopes for Czech Republic going on further into the tournament. Yes, no, I do as well. I do. I mean, this is a side who maybe online as well. We have to really kind of keep an eye out. This is, uh, yeah, they, they, they looked very, very good in that instance. For, for Hungary, it, it's not over. The, that's the positive thing. They're in the upper bracket. He's now dropping to the lower bracket. They'll be taking on Belgium next. Uh, hmm. But wow, I mean... All in all, Hungary coming in towards that Belgian game, we need a completely different showing. They cannot even bring anything, you know, similar to what we saw on no. Mirage. And I thought off the back of map number two, off Anubis, with kind of how good they look for the most part in that one, that they'd be able to chain it in towards what is a similarly kind of puggy map in its sense of Mirage. But yeah, it, they were completely caught off guard. They just like a stone in water, just couldn't keep afloat. Yeah, tough, uh, tough break for them. Um, lots of individual fun highlights coming out from, from Hungary as well. Um, maybe especially on some of the other maps, like Corey on that second one was very good. I think Fleev had some great highlights with the AWP, and Aaron, obviously, I think overall was just playing quite well. But it just wasn't enough here today. It's Czech Republic to take the victory. So well done on them. Um, that was only the first best of three, though. Maybe we have a whole other best of three still coming up for you guys. So, um, yeah, the action kind of continues here on the channel. But, um, yeah, that one... That one took all three maps. It did. It was a pretty sick, pretty sick game. I mean, no two ways about it. Uh, going the, the full distance coming through. We'll have to see where the hungry can bounce back uh, against Belgium. For for me, it's not a positive sign in that instance, just because it was a rough. It, it, I mean, there's nothing about it. It was rough. I mean, you, you you've got to mentally reset. But we'll have to yes. wait and see. We're going to another best of three. We're gonna take a little break before we get there. We'll see you soon.